Welcome to the Federation X podcast. I am your host, Grayson, and here with me tonight, my special guest, former uh, commissioner in Federation X, former Hall of Famer. We're talking to Maverick Storm. Okay. Hey, welcome, Mav. So glad to have you on. I know there's probably a few people who uh, maybe put some of the clues together and figured out that it was going to be you. We've already got Colt Calhoun on the live feed saying he's yes. Never, never heard of you. That's what he says. So, yeah, uh, you know what? He never heard of me, but I'm still number one on your list to get in your jumpsuit, son. That's right. There you go. That's <laughs> awesome. So, hey, excited. Uh, and many of you don't know this. I mean, Eric and I go way back. We go back a long ways. Um, we've we've had a chance to kind of get together and 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 you know, have some of the conversations personally where we've sat up and had drinks and just had these conversations half a night that we're going to get to dive into right now. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see a good turnout. I, I see, uh, uh, I see genocides on, I see max entropies on, I see we've got, uh, Bill. robes, right? Hey, There's, Bill, I'm thinking of you, buddy. That's right. He's got the whiskey out, Bill. It's not peanut butter whiskey. It's real no. whiskey, Bill. Real whiskey. Real. Seven, seven years age. And my boy, Gino. Fucking love you guys. All right. So good that we could do this. I, just so everybody knows, like, I have been, you know, casually poking Eric every now and then. And finally, I reached out and was like, hey, are you just going to ignore this forever? And he was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's time to do a podcast. Get on here. So I he's can't. been watching. He's been enjoying the podcast that you guys did. Yes. And we have a pile of stuff to jump on and talk about. Hey, we see the Kansas kid is out there. I see Lars, our dude Lars is out there as well. What a what a great way to get this rolling. So excited to have everybody with us. Hey, real quick, Kansas kid. I remember when you kidnapped Storm and took me to GLCW and you and Ridgeway put a shot collar on me to make me perform for you guys. It was awesome. <laughs> Just had to throw it out there. Hey, listen, here's what I'll throw out. It took less than a minute into the uh, into the podcast for somebody in the comments to reference the Dan Hodge sleeper hold. Oh, hey, you know what? You say what you will. He's a Hall of Famer, man. Oh, listen, that was that's a classic moment, right? It was absolutely amazing. The snores were real. That was the not snores fake. sure were real. So here's, here's the thing we're going to do. We're going to, you know, obviously we'll start and work in. We've got some questions we typically like to ask, and I'll ask them of Eric, and we'll get some background. And, and for those of you who don't know all the details, you get to learn a little bit more about some of his favorite characters and some of the things he's seen and done. And then we'll get into the main substance. And, man, we just have so many things we can dive into. Uh, when Eric and I sit around and have these conversations, we, you know, we blink and 30 minutes later, we're talking about our seventh subject because they just kind of, they run on tangents right out into other topics. And so we're going to do a little bit of that, but we're going to start with some, we'll call it a little bit of a, a you know, trashy dish topic. We're going to talk about why he left Rassel. And we're going to talk about why we left Rassel together uh, to, to give birth to Federation X. And we're going to tell you some of the things that we haven't told before, that, that are really the story of what went on behind the scenes firsthand from Eric, who was there actually in the EC when that was going on. And so we are, we are going to have some of that conversation. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We are going to circle up and talk about the golden rule of EFEDs and how much it annoyed Eric to hear about that. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll find a whole bunch of other topics as we get going. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's dive in. Um, Eric, I think I think everybody certainly is super familiar with Storm, right? You know, there was there was the guy who who was really Hall of Fame. He was win the USOBs, like big deal. And everybody knows Maverick, and that's your commissioner character. Um, before I get to any other questions, uh, who are the characters they don't know? Because you're like me. You get this little creative tweak. And you go and you create a character and he lasts three days and then you just bury him and never mention him again. And I know you've got a whole host of them. Other characters, um, obviously Inferno. A lot of people knew Inferno. And um, I did uh, Carissa Rain. 
um, Calgary kid, uh, a little known remembered person named Marcus Bennett. Oh, I ran. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah he, he made it about a week. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know Delusional Dave Diamond. Absolutely. Dave is a guy that I can play for about a month at a time, and then he disappeared. I, I don't have the same comedic chops as, like, I mean, I, I feel like I do, but I can't keep that up at an extended length of time. So so I'm not wrong, right? Uh, Dave Diamond's obsession was with Of Terror. Yes. Oh, and now well, he's it, of it changed. But, but it changed. Okay, because see, Dave had a man crush on Alan too. Oh, that's true. He did. That's right. He had a he 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 had a, he had a crush on Tear. He had it. Well, he had a crush on a lot of people because he was you know in the closet, so to right. speak. Except the narrator kept outing him every time. He spoke. Well, I'm pretty sure Fantastico did as well. We just never yes, heard him. and you just never heard him speak because you know only Dave could hear the dead luchador talk. That's right. But um. I don't, I'm trying to think of any other characters that I, I mean, it's been so long. I mean, you know, Pariah, that, that was Storm anyway. That doesn't really count. Um, I can't, Dread. <laughs> that wasn't exactly a character, but uh, that was, that was Mav's replacement, which was terrible. Um, uh, Jerry Springer. Ran him for a Saber. Most people didn't know about Saber. That's how... I did. Jeff and I That's right. Met um, was through Saber. Um, I'm sure there's more, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. That's a pretty good cross section, and I've seen some names go out, and a few people be like, "I did not know that was you." You know, we commenting about uh, not knowing about Carissa in the beginning, uh, uh, and then uh, you know, finding out and, and putting those pieces together. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about Carissa, though, because. You know, that's a, that's a, you know, a redirect. And, and we were kind of having a laugh before we got on the air about the whole, hey, we just learned what Twitter lesbians were like. We didn't have a name for what, uh, let's, let's be honest, what Eric created. Um, yes. We didn't have a name for that in the day. And not this Eric. That's right. That's Jake right. Crash, Eric, not me. <laughs> I, I think, I think we collectively call him wheelchair Eric. I think that's the move. And, uh. And then he responds to tell us, I'm not in a wheelchair, guys. Like, I don't know where this came from. It came from Benny singing him a song. So uh, you went with Carissa, and it was funny. We were talking about this. Uh, I wonder if you would share the story, like, the moment when you realize, yeah, this, this isn't, a, like, I don't want a female character who's interested in relationships because this is not, like, this is just strange. So I made Carissa, I don't even remember why, I, I don't even remember. I, I can be motivated to make characters by something as stupid as a YouTube video. There was a YouTube video with a song by this, and I can't remember the name of the woman that I used to represent Carissa off the top of my head, but she had this song. I like the song, and I'm like, that would be cool interest music. I'm going to make her. And of course, as I have a tendency to do any character that I keep around for, oh, Nikki Poison. That's another one I played as well. Matt, that was, that was, that was uh, Storm and Maverick's sister. So a lot of my characters wind up having family ties or, or relationships with Storm and Maverick. And Carissa was one of them. And eventually, um, while I was teaming with Techno as Blitzkrieg, by the way, <clears throat> you can get your action figures right here for $29.99. See, we have, uh, you can have your FedEx Collector's Edition Jason Storm, right? We also have, uh, who's else up here? We got Techno. Huh? Little shameless self-promotion. Hey, you know, Bobby Bob taught me well. That's right. Um, Techno and I were a tag team, and Carissa was our manager. And Techno's like, oh, I think I'm going to have Techno like Carissa. And I'm like, cool. I didn't think twice about it until he started writing about it. And then it got awkward. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I don't, I don't even remember who it was. I found some other chick in the Fed to be interested in. And it was like, she's a lesbian. Sorry. I, could, I couldn't do it. There's something weird. There's something weird about writing about love stories with a dude. Yeah. Yeah, um, I get it. Although, to be, if I'm going to be honest, because you know I don't tend to hide things. I'll be honest and upfront with things. That was just like the whole thing with Maverick and Kitty. 
you know, I did that whole story with Kitty for the longest time, and I thought Kitty was a chick. And then when I found out it was a guy, I just, I was like so far into it. I'm like, well, what the hell am I going to do now? So, but I mean, you, as you watch that progress and the dynamic yeah. change. Do but, you remember, because I'm pretty sure that story and what was going on around it was one of the reasons that Vigilante was like, hey, uh, I'm going to drop a loser leaves fed match to Ed because I, I, like this isn't working for me. I'm out of here. Like there was some blowback for you around that angle. You were really into the angle and there were some players that were like, I'm not down with that. I, I'm out. In some of the older podcasts that some people may have not watched, especially because it was me on a phone and they were so terrible. Um, some people may have heard this before and have heard me say, you know, there was a time I don't want to talk about it, but you know what? I'm going to talk about it tonight. Here's what happened. Right. Um, 2007, I hit a wall and I went through a midlife crisis. Um, for six months, I checked out. I quit my job. I quit my family. Um, the room that you see me in right now is my man cave. I sat in here for six months with a bottle and a computer in this corner right here. And all I did was role play all day. I hid like a coward from my life because you hit that age and you know, oh my God, I'm never gonna feel this again. I'm never gonna experience that again. Yeah, I'm old. I mean, look at me. I'm old. Okay. I ain't what I use. We're all old. We ain't getting any younger. That's you're not wrong. And I was, I was losing it. And I wanted to feel those things that I felt when I was a kid, you know, younger. Yeah, for sure. Kitty gave me the outlet. And there was a, a there was a point. And as, as embarrassing as this might be for somebody to admit, but there was a point where I actually started to get an emotional attachment to the character. Not, not the person writing, obviously, the character. Right. And it was something I needed to do. And, you know, in hindsight, I would not go back and change it because my wife and I came through that stronger than ever. Right. It, it was a good, it, it was good that it happened, but it was not fun while it was going on. And Vig, Vig was the first one to come at me. He and sure he's like, was. he's like, Mav, what are you doing? He's, what's with all this touchy feely drama crap? And and if I remember, Lars was in it because it was the brothers, the Bloods. They all came to me and they're like, dude, you're losing it. And I'm like, look, I'm not going to explain myself to you. This is what I need to do. And and I know, I know, Viggy was pissed at me, but Viggy never disrespected me and never he never. He didn't turn his back on me as a no. friend. Right. And he's like, I understand you got to do what you got to do, but I'm just, and yeah, I got a lot of blowback over it. And, it and, did. You know. Yeah, it took some heat. I, I know, like, it was enough. Like, Viggy just messaged me. And he's like, I'm, I need Ed to put, put me down so yeah. I have a reason to go. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Like, I obviously, we're not looking to see a talent like Viggy go. I, I want to play somewhere else. Right. Uh, so I remember that it was it was definitely a standout moment, um, and and the byproduct of like you were I mean you were writing some you were writing your feelings out for sure. There was I tapped into a uh, you know I will say this, and I don't care what anybody says because that you know me Jeff that's the way I've always been. Yeah. Um, some of the best darkest stuff came out of me through math expressing how I was feeling inside. And and I look back on some of the stuff I wrote. Now, granted, yes, it was touchy feel a dramy, blah, blah. And it was stupid. But there was good stuff that came out, or at least I thought was good stuff. Yeah, I think that's right. And and so, listen, as we look back, and, you know, it's certainly you heard some of the, the lists that people threw out. You know, Mav certainly on lots of top fives for commissioners. Uh, Storm certainly shows up on people's list of like those Hall of Fame type characters. Do you have a preference for your, for one of your brothers more than the other one? Oh my God. I couldn't have, I couldn't have a, uh, I couldn't have a preference if I tried. I, you know, I mean, brothers, you know, are we, are, are we talking about, sorry, are we talking about the Blood Brothers? Are we talking about Storm or Maverick? 
I'm talking Stormer math. Oh, right? Stormer math. Yeah, there... well, I mean, I, you know, I, real quick, too, just because I wanted to throw this out. I, I saw – I'm going to tell you something. When a guy like Lars says you're number one on his list of commissions, that is a humbling, humbling experience because I learned what I learned from Lars, from you, from Judge, Papa Guido, Funky yep. Nassau. But Lars was the template. And for him to say something like that, I got no words. I was humbled by that and 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 somebody else. Bill, I love you, buddy. I really do. I didn't ever, I never knew you wanted to tag with me. If I ever come back, we got to make that happen. And I love you from the bottom of my heart, man. Yeah, but it's um, true. You you told me that as soon as you saw that you you messaged me to say I watched this. How the hell? Like Bill never said it. I didn't know. So we had this conversation as soon as you saw that uh, that podcast. But um, as far as, as you know, it, it's it's difficult. There's a special place for both of them. I, I you know I love I love commissioning. Yep. I loved being involved. I loved helping people. Storm. I mean. Storm was my first. He's he's always going to be first. Now, as far as the Hall of Fame is concerned, you know, at one time I was happy about being in the Wrestle Hall of Fame. I can't say I was too pleased about it on the way out the door because that turned into a hall of I just put anybody I want in there, which, I mean, Pikachu could have got into or Pika Zap or whatever the hell his name is. He could have got in there. Hey, man, he doesn't have a name. We have a cone for a reason. There's a cone yeah. of silence over that name. We just don't speak it. Well, I won't speak it anymore because I hated that kid. Anyway, I, uh, you know, I don't even care about a Hall of Fame. When your peers say the things that Omega, love him. He said some really nice things. And I have, keep in mind, I haven't even watched all the, all the stuff, you know. He said some nice things. Lars said some stuff. Bill, I mean, when you have your when you have the respect of your peers, that's to me is better than having a Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think that's the significant piece of it, and and certainly it reflects. You know, it's cool that people were in the Hall of Fame in the right group, got the right attention. But at the end of the day, if the people you played with think highly of the work that you did, you yeah. did your job and you did it well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would totally agree with that. So, you know, one of the things that you mentioned when we were talking about this and, and you said you really like to be uh, you know, a commissioner, you like that job. We talked about one of the challenges of being a really effective commissioner though, and it's that all the people you wanna play with end up being in your fed. Yes, yes, that is, uh, that's, uh, that's a dirty little secret I had about playing in my own feds with all this stuff. Cause some of those, some of those names I mentioned that people are like, well, who is Calgary Kid or you know, who was so-and-so? It was me. Because the, uh, the, the downside of being a commissioner is <clears throat> all the people you work with in your Fed are the people you want to play with. Yeah. Okay? And anybody and, and, and everybody out there knows. Gino knows. Lars knows. You, you know. Uh, Weed knows. Bill knows. Every single time I went somewhere and started a Fed or, or, or took over a Fed, you knew who was coming. Mm -hmm. Eric's coming. Jordan's coming. You're coming. Bill's coming. Lars is coming. You know, Omega's coming. Emissary was coming. Right. Everybody I knew, all the right, and, and I had the, I couldn't have, I mean, the feds that I got to run and the people I got to work with, blown away. I mean, it was, and, and then you, and then here's Storm. I'm running, say, I'm running NGPW. And here I am over at CWA, and it's like, there's not, I mean, there's like two or three talented people over here, and I'm sitting there, and instead of playing with them, I'm trying to figure out how to get them over there with the rest of us. Right. right. So I started making characters like Carissa, who most people didn't know. And, and what was really hysterical is I start getting emails from people, and I'm getting instant messages. Dude, why doesn't Carissa ever get title shots? She's pretty good. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, what Remind am I going to do? Division. It's it's me. I can't I can't give my. But I didn't think anybody would notice. So when people started noticing, I would book her in title matches and then lose her on purpose. 
I would tank some matches to make sure she didn't win because I didn't want to be unfair, you know. But all my friends were there, and that's what you want to play. Hundred um, percent. Let's let's shift gears a little bit before we get off of your your history. Let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, what's what would you say is your trademark tag team run? Uh, Storm never did good. I mean, honestly, if I was going to pick anybody, it would have to be me and Techno Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg had several runs. I mean, Allen and Storm had. If not for the instant karma initiative and Which, all the stuff that I did with Emissary, I don't know where Allen and Storm might have gone because we were only a tag team for, what, a month? We won the titles in our first match together. Yeah, we did pretty good. But we never got anywhere. So if I had to pick that that that, 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 that preeminent tag team, it's got to be Techno and me because Blitzkrieg, I don't know how many. I think we won a couple titles. I don't remember. You know, but you were together for a while. But we were. Blitzkrieg was a thing, and Techno was always Storm's right hand man. And I mean, like I said, you know, we have these fine products back here. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you know, I mean, even when I play my video, because you know I'm big into video games. I have WWE, and I play. You know, I, I create. Just so you guys all know, I never forgot you genocide i created i created excess i create lars i create allen i create nighthawk i create storm and inferno and, and i and i create the cwa and i make the ngpw and i just do this on you know with uh with the video games but uh yeah i rambled so hard i forgot what was the question <laughs> again i'm sorry my brain just That's fine. we're talking tag teams but we're not talking tag teams but yeah i mean Storm was never really a tag team kind of guy. I mean, we did have other – back in the slam, I had uh, – I believe I – with Bobby Bob's All-Stars, I believe I, I tagged a lot with Snap Taylor, um, Canadian Kid. I tagged with him a couple times, and Flesh Basher was part of our, our group. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if I had to pick one, it would definitely be Blitzkrieg. Yeah, I think that's a great choice. Uh, title Runs. Do you have a signature title run, one you look back to and go, that's the one? Superstar. So let's I talk have... about it, because you did something with the Superstar title that I don't think you are you get enough love for. I also know that it, I mean, it, it ground you up pretty hard by the time it was done. You defended the Superstar title every week for months. Yeah. That was a dumb idea. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of titles, you know, with Storm. Mm -hmm. I mean, over a, well over 100. I mean, I don't think I had as many world titles as Gino, but, I mean, I, I've had tons of titles. Uh, I won the Ultimate Championship. For those of you who don't remember Slam, that was C-Slam's ultimate title, you know. Um, I... I won a USOB when it actually meant something. <laughs> Not anymore. Anyway, um, but no, the superstar title, that uh, I was on my A game and it took it, it I'm not I'm not joking and I'm not being melodramatic. It literally ripped my soul out in the end. Yeah. Um it was there were no free rides for that run either, right? Like you were one week rude, the next week, I think you had some weed man matches in there. You like, you, uh, you maybe I can't remember some of the other ones, although I'm sure I could go back and pull the actual cards. But you were having to go full out every week and write somebody who is a legit star. I had uh, just prior to. Uh... Just prior to um, the king of the king of wrestling, I had a match. I, I was actually, I was I was on on the site last night um, for like four, three four hours reading stuff. I had matches with uh, Rude and Carnage. Mm -hmm. I had a match with Omega. Yeah. Um, the match with Emissary. Um, and then when we started, you know, I mean. I remember you and I, Alan and Storm, going back and forth because I was like, you know what, Alan, you got first pick. You are you have you're picking before me. Come on, man, trade down. You want you want me so bad. Come and get me, and and you didn't pick me. 
So I made a big stink about it. I was starting like, look, see, you had the opportunity, but you chickened out. And I said, let me show you what balls look like. And I picked Haley as my first opponent. Yeah. Which almost killed me. Which almost, you say what you want about Johnny XS, but I'm going to tell you something. Haley is a whole other animal. That was nothing but spin master on spin master on spin master because every time I tried to pull something out of my hat, Haley knew where I was going, and I had we had to out outspin each other, right? And then I had to uh, face uh, McCormick, who and I'm not going to go into great details. I've talked about this before. He gutted Storm with a shank, and I had to sell that, and it was terrible. And then I had to face Root. And, and anybody who's ever played any kind of match based on a role play with Rude knows that that's not an easy task. And, of course, we get to our match, which I have nothing but regret over. Ah. And um, by the time we got to the end of that match, you know, and I've said this before, a lot of people thought, oh, well, look, Storm's taking his ball and he's going home. He's killing Storm. That was not that. That, that was not it. I, I, I left it. When I tell you guys I left it all on the table, I left it all on the table. The problem was is that when I pulled up for the, when I pulled up to that table for that match with you, the plate was empty. I didn't have anything left. I, I had nothing. And um, when I got done, I'm just sitting there and I'm going, with all the injuries he did and the way you set me up with that last post, and I'm like, I'm going to get rid of him. I don't want to do this right now. I can't do this anymore. I need a break. I can't, I, I can't do this. And so it's my, it's my, to me, it's my biggest title, but it's also one of my biggest regrets because it literally sucked storm soul out of me. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough. I remember it was tough. We talked about it a fair bit afterwards. Uh, I'm trying to think uh, like, I know, obviously I remember finals against you semifinals against genocide i think first round i had hooligan there's yeah. one in between that i don't remember you had hooligan and i don't even think he did he even show up i don't even think he yeah, showed but up like not enough like i got one or two posts out of him and that was it it was a disappointment for sure i was just reading this last night too and i cannot for the life of me remember who your second opponent was i, yeah. I literally 24 hours ago was sitting in a chair over there reading it and i don't remember who it was yeah. it's gonna be something awful that i forgot like like one of Randy's characters or something. Like it's going to be, <laughs> and I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Randy. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about your characters, the ones that, you know, you, you're really most known for, tag teams and titles. Uh, who's your favorite feud? Oh, God. There's so many. Um, uh I guess uh, Alan Scott. I know anybody who's listened to me talk on podcast must think I know what you had for breakfast and think I must kiss your butt all the time. But I'm going to tell you what, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this man's the real deal. That's all I'm going to say. I know Storm's supposed to be the real deal. This man's the real deal. Our, our feud with uh, the feud that we had that culminated so terribly. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'll just throw it out here real quick. I made the mistake of writing his entrance for him, which was the dumbest thing I could have ever done. You've been raked over the coals for this. I'm not even mad about it anymore. <laughs> like, I understand you're not, but it's embarrassing because we've been together. We've worked together, been together 20 some odd years. I should not. That Anyway. Do but, you, uh, hey, quick, while one, you say that, do you remember that you were the judge of the first barroom brawl that I won? Yes. Yes. I was, I was just thinking about it the other day when you were talking about stuff with me, and I was like, oh, crap. Like, way back when I won my first barroom brawl, you were the judge. Well, guess what? Do you remember who the judge was when I won my first barroom brawl with Inferno? You I were. Yeah, you I think were. I was judging that. That's right. You were the first. Yes. That's, but, um, that's, that's pretty funny. The, the, you know, the feuds I had with, 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 you know, the feud I had with Alan was good. He, and even though it was, you have to remember when I say the next person, you have to remember that when it started, there was no idea of swerving at this point. My feud with Emissary started off as a legit feud. Right. Um, and, of course, I would be remiss not to mention the, uh, 
years, and, and remember that this is not months, this is not weeks, years feud that Maverick had with Johnny Root. Yeah, that was a big feud. Like, it lasted a long time. It, ne it never technically ended. Right. You know, because Mav and, and I don't think Mav and I mean, I don't know what Rude's up to now, but I'm pretty sure Mav and Rude are not going to sit down and have a beer and swap war stories anytime soon. So, so, so I don't think I'm letting any cats out of the bag. I, I talked to Jordan to see if I could get him on. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was like, we almost committed that he was going to jump on and, and, and like be part of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, but he had a, a conflict and couldn't make it. So we'll have him back on again soon in the future. We'll get a chance to catch up with him. Oh, we'll have to. We will definitely have to do that because that'll be some good fun. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good time. Um, so, you know, like outside of Feud, because let's leave Feud aside, like there are some yeah. interesting characters out there, ones that, you know, maybe don't necessarily have immediately people going, oh, yeah. But you, you look back and you're like, man, I just love that character. Is there one, not yours, but someone else's that you just kind of point to and go, how do you not love that character? Oh, my God. We could, You know what? I'm not even joking with you. As a former commish, we could do an entire show on that category. Right? There are tons of people. Yeah. Um, one of the first people that ever came to cross Manowar. Yep. I was running IRCW back in Seasland, my first commission job. He was the first person that I that I saw that I grasped on. I did not know at the time. Um, By the way, does everybody know how you know Man of War? Like who he's more famous for being? Because I do. I'm trying to remember. I know. I know who you're. I can't. Royal Ryan, Ryan Scott. Ryan. Yes, thank you. You're right, Royal Ryan Scott. I should. Who, by the way, I invited on tonight, so we'll see if he actually shows up. Okay, well, that would be great. But um, yeah, Man of War, Royal Ryan Scott, um, and I, and and you know what? You know me. I don't care if I take heat for it or not. One of my favorite characters, so much so, so that Storm got married to her. Faith, right? Everybody can, you know what? Everybody can give crap to Eric a little bit here. They give him a little, I mean, hell, I'm not above giving Eric some shit too. But despite everything, I always liked Faith. Faith, I get that some people like, you know, El, the living dead girl. I know some people, and Chance wasn't bad. I mean, hell, Chance was Storm's niece somehow. I don't remember, because I think Chance was related to Faith. I didn't have a problem with Chance. Chance was okay. I was Chance never was a blank in part. Yeah, I was never a big fan of Price's, J Jake Price, but Faith, I always liked Faith. Faith was one of my favorites, and I feel like Faith never got enough, uh, I'm trying to think of the word I'm trying to use here, just recognition. I just don't feel like Eric got enough recognition with Faith, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember Omega when he first started out. Um, I remember instantly liking everything I saw from him, and that's why I made him one of my regulars every time. I mean, if if you got if I took over Fed and I sent you and you know told you come on over, you you were we were good, you know. Um, right. some other people, Stoner Boy was a surprise for me. Kansas Kid was a surprise for me because you know, even though I do run comedic characters and I have been prone to being comedic with Storm and other characters before. I wasn't like your typical kind of person who like AODers, for instance, and nothing against Holy, love Holy Evil, Naked Man, they were awesome. Um, but it's just not the kind of fed I want to run. I, I like to be more simulation, I guess, so to sure. speak, like a little yep. bit more like the, pro, the real thing. Yep. Um, but Kansas Kid blew me out of the water. Stoner Boy was amazing. I mean, um, eh. I liked them. I don't know, whatever. Valentine. I loved Valentine. Oh, wow, sure. Especially when they would run into each other, him and Storm, because they would do that. You look like me with a mullet. You look like me without a mullet, you know? So, um, you know, um, Angelica Grimm, I don't feel like she ever got enough respect. I mean, I'm, I think, she, I mean, most people do. I think there were other people who could have given her a little bit more, um, but she was always a staple. Okay, wait, 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 because I'm watching the, let me just say this. Okay. Um, you had the same uh, reaction when I told you the other night, because you said to me, hey, so I read the boards a little bit. Whoever this terrific Tony Robes is, and I was like, hey, so wait till I tell you who that actually is. 
Oh, I, I, I yeah. So let me tell you something, and I'm going to be on MC again. I'm going to be honest with everybody. I'm a huge Tony Robes mark. Not even going to play. I, I, I started, and all it took was the Haterade commercial. Right. I saw that, and that was so utterly priceless. And and I, I went and I read some of his work. I'm not going to talk about his imposter tag team partner who stole my name and is riding my coattails. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Maverick Dawson's pretty cool, but you need to change your first name. <laughs> But uh, I just want to let Tony Rhodes know that, you know, hey, anytime you want to put your hay rate up against my elite collection or my title, you let me know, buddy. You're not euthanizing this guy. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So good. So I'm glad we jumped into that, and I'm glad that we, we share that story. But I want to redirect. Okay. Uh, we, we've got, we can come back to some of these, and we will almost naturally as part of the story. But sure. let's dive in to, you know, you, you have a little more insight, a little different insight than so many of us who remember um, the friction and the difficulty and ultimately the dissolution of Russell and the going from, you know, Hog thinking I was like super cool to thinking I secretly murdered all of his family. Um, yeah. So let's... Uh, Let's talk about that a little bit, and let's start with uh, you were there on the EC when they created Indy and probably didn't understand what was about to happen when Bruce and Tim and I were like, oh, you'll let us have complete control over our own Fed under your system? Great. And we were like, hey, we're going to take everybody. Took me too for a start. Anyway, yep. I went. I went along at the beginning. I couldn't keep it up because of the commission, the EC thing. But uh, yeah, so um, just a little backstory. C Slam had closed his doors. I wasn't going to go to Cyber Brawls. I wasn't going to go to Ring Wars. I mean, if that's where you went, that's fine. I decided to go to wrestle. Um, I believed in it. I liked it. I wanted to be part of it. Burnt saw that, had me take over some executive things, and eventually made me CEO of the website. So I'm running the day to day stuff. Um, and about the time they created, you guys wanted to create FedEx, it was because they decided they wanted to do the ATM. Yep. The ATM was the worst decision they ever made. And I'll get into that later. Um, they decide they want to do the indie thing. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Sounds good. I like that idea. You know, cool. And I knew, I knew what you and Tim and, and Bruce were, were wanting to do. Yeah. Like, this is going to be great. You know, instead of having to pay, there's going to be a Fed you can go to where your actual talent will account for something rather than buying yourself a cheap title. Yep. You guys started up and the very first day, the very first day. I start getting messages from Bert. Yeah, they, they're, they're taking everybody. I'm like, so they took some people. So what? What do you, who cares? You let them just run their fed. They'll, you know, it's good. We, it balances things out. Bert didn't want to hear that. Okay. Cause contrary to popular belief for all those people out there who, who heard the song and dance, Oh, wrestle doesn't make any money. I know how much the servers cost to run every month, and I know how much money was coming in from the ATM. Let me tell you something. They were making money hand over fist. Yeah. Okay? So much so that when we did that little offshoot, and I don't know if you remember this, that Wrestle News Net, I went to cover a Hall of Fame in, uh, in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Burt bought me a $400 plane ticket, and I can tell you right now, it didn't come out of his wallet. Right. So... Um, the disillusion for me with the disillusion started prior to the ATM and, and the FedEx thing. When I got told that I wasn't being, um, um, uh, I guess rigid enough with people because I'd always been the mediator. And I always tried to find common ground to make everybody happy, which is why they decided, oh, why don't you take a break and bring another character in and, and play that like harsh. So I came up with dread, which was. Terrible. Uh, I didn't like it. 
I, I don't want to be a hard ass. I want to help people. I don't want to, you know, so that started my disillusion with the whole thing. And then the ATM thing didn't help when they snubbed their nose at you guys. It got worse. Yeah. Um, eventually I walked away. Um, it, it, it broke my heart to walk away because I invested a lot of time. I invested a lot of time to try to make wrestle the best thing there was. And it, it just, it sucked that greed took over. Right. I don't disagree with that. So, you know, this is the first go around. This is the original FedEx. This is, you know, when we launched that, I think we had 300 posts from like opening till noon that first day. Like it was. It was insane. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, and, and we had a pretty good run. And then, you know, the conflict grew to a point that it died. And, and, and it really was conflict with the EC that killed it. And I, I can only say, and we've shared before, that wasn't coincidental. Like we were, we were banging the wallet again, you know, and it was hurting them. And so, yeah. and so that was, you know, a, an orchestrated conflict. Yes. Yeah, and it so was. FedEx went away. And probably could have stayed away, except more shit happened. <sighs> yep. I wasn't part of the EC at that point, and I wasn't running anything anymore, but I also still had Burnt's ear. And uh, the ATM, the lottery debacle, where everybody got given a bunch of money. Uh-oh, we screwed up. Well, we knew it was broken. So, you know, we just let it go. But now, now it's hurting our bottom line. So, hey, we fucked up. We knew it was broken, but um, we're taking it all back. No, you, 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 no, no, you don't do that. No, no. Mm -mm. And I said, that's it. And, and, and when I heard that, because I still had access, because I was still, I still had access to the EC forums and I knew all this stuff was going on. I'm like, no, we're, we're no, we're done. And I contacted you. I says, no, I can't do this anymore. Right. We need to let's bring FedEx back and go somewhere else. Right. And, and so two Jeff of the and people I, that got hit the hardest with that take the money back were Tim and I. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I talked to you and we talked to Tim and we said, you know what, let's let's right let's go elsewhere. But you know what? Let's give him a shot. Let's let, let's talk to Bert and see if we can work this out. This is the part that nobody knows. Jeff and I spent, what was it, 48 hours? or so, It was like 48 or 72 hours. Yeah. Constantly, constantly talking to Burnt, trying to bring FedEx back to wrestle, trying to get him to understand the, the, the fuck-ups they were making. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Jeff made every damn concession you can think of to try to get Burnt to go along with this. They only cared about their bottom line. So much so, no matter what we tried to offer them, they wanted nothing to do with us. That's why we left. And I told him, and, I, and Jeff was there when I said it to Burnt. I said, you burned your bridge. We're leaving. And I said, and I'm taking every fucking person in NGPW with me. And when we left, what did we do? We took every single person from that Fed. Everybody so, with us. So when we decided that was the path, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, a quick shout out to uh, to Bill because uh, he was the first person to be like, "Shit, we're doing this again." All right, I'm in. Yep. Uh, like immediately, the first person to respond and go, "Yeah, of course." Yep. Uh, and and that meant a lot. And Angelica was like number two or number three, like really yep. quick to that as well. And we emptied that place pretty quick. Um, we did. The, the piece that's missing here is that, you know, I, I think the way Eric shared it makes it seem like we went to them and said, you, you need us. And we didn't. What we said was, hey, we're going to go. And Bernd reached out to Eric and said, how do I make this not happen? You know what? You're right. Yeah, I did. I, I, I got it in my overzealousness to tell that story because I still get pissed off about it to this day. 
Yeah, that and, then, and he's right. That was the biggest kick in the teeth was that you asked us to stay and then we did everything we could right. to bend over, to acquiesce to your demands, and it still wasn't good enough at the end of the day. That's right. We, uh, we conceded on almost every point they asked for, um, including we didn't tell them there couldn't be an ATM. What we told them was we had to have the right uh, as a Fed Yes. To be able to have titles where you couldn't spend, uh, you couldn't buy your points. You could spend because you could earn money in Rassel, but right. it had to be earned. You couldn't go, like, that was just a thing we weren't going to do. And even that, that one Fed would have titles that were done that way. They, that was a, they would not bite. And, I, and we talked to them and said, hey, listen, I, I, and I told them in all honesty, I said, we can get you more money than you used to make. It doesn't have to be this way. Mm -hmm. And there, there was just no negotiating on that point. No, there was not. And that's, yeah. and, and you know what? Broke my heart because like I said, we put all that time and effort into it. But you know what? I ain't got no regrets because what we made was better than anything we've done prior, you know, maybe except for the first iteration. Because yeah. what you guys did that first time because if y'all, you know, I know I didn't, re I, I know I wasn't active over there because I just couldn't keep up. But if you guys don't think I didn't keep up with what was going on, I mean, that was must reading. Right. You know, I'm just, it's, it's, you didn't go a day. I mean, there were times that I was booking badly my own cards because I was so busy reading what was going on in FedEx. Because like, once again, all your friends are over there. So, yeah. Yeah, it was tough. I, I see Colt just commenting like after we were gone. Colt was on the EC and it was a, an untenable topic. Like he just couldn't bring it up and get them to come to the table. Uh, I'm not surprised. Like it really was a deterioration process. There was a time when we weren't combative. It wasn't unfriendly. The yeah. first Federation X did something they didn't think could happen. It proved that there was a better model than the one that existed and a lot of big name players came and there was a period of time where it was you know bigger than the na all the nationals yeah and, and that was that was the end of us being friendly yeah so it it definitely was uh disappointing it was unfortunate we we had some pretty interesting conversations uh, around it um but man, uh, it, it just never worked out and it wasn't to be. It worked out for us. We went to Federation X and man, we had a hell of a run. I'm going to tell you right now too. And I, I you know what? I, 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 like I said earlier, I don't have any regrets. I mean, did it suck? Sure, it sucked. When you invest that much time, of course it sucks. FedEx was, no. I mean, where else? And, I only, and I'm only bringing this up because I read it last night. And last night, it suddenly occurred to me. I was a real dick. <laughs> I was a super large dick sometimes. Because where else can you write a story about Draven walking around with a 12-inch black dildo with a set of balls in his jacket pocket and call him out because he was dumb enough to write that into his story? Oh, oh I'm going to pull you out. You do it. And I have – there's an entire post – where all I do is rant about the fact that he pulled a dildo out of his pocket. And I'm reading this and I'm going, you know, the other night when Bill said I'm an asshole, I was like, you know, I've always known I was an asshole, but I didn't really get how much of an asshole until I started reading some of my po I mean, I was just straight up vile to rude on so many occasions. Right. I would rip into people like with no mercy in character with Storm to the point where I was like, dude, I was a giant douche. We were having that conversation last night. <laughs> totally true. Oh, that's so good. Hey, let's, uh, so we talked about the feds. Let's talk a little bit before we ramble on to other stuff. Let's specifically gotcha. shift. You listened to Omega and I talk about the golden rule of e-feds and, and you heard me talk a little bit about how we discovered, you know, this whole world that really we weren't connected to who have grown up playing a different game. It's not our game. It is a different game. And in that environment, they have some rules that are anathema to us. Like they just, they're, 
or death to what we do. Um, but, but the rules make it seem like what we do would be death to what they do. And you had a pretty visceral reaction to it when I shared it with you. Tell everybody what you were thinking when you, when you first heard about this. All right, so let me tell you, I came across C-SLAM after looking at a couple other feds, right? And, and I hadn't really thought about this until I saw you guys talking about it on the last podcast. And where I had seen where people do that, what, that, that golden rule where, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write my character, but you're not going to write my character. You're not going to do anything with my character. And then we're going to pass it off to a third party who's going to write our match. And I'm like, the fuck? No, no. See, creative writing is about being creative. It's about somebody playing with your character, putting you in a situation that you have to be creative enough to write yourself out of, okay? There's too many people that play e-fetting, you know, that are, 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 their, their characters are just, my character is untouchable. Uh, he is the greatest there is, and no one shall make me look bad, and I shall do this, and I shall, okay, look, you know some of the worst beatings Storm ever took were given to him by me? I made him look like an ass clown. I made him look weak. I'm the one who beats the shit out of him. And it's like Omega said, you trust the people that you play with to sell your character, because here's the thing, if you're a good writer, and you're paying attention to what you're reading, selling someone else is extremely easy. So you have this golden, like when I think, I, I don't remember if it was you or Omega who said, um, if I write about your character in a Fed you're never going to visit, in a post you're never going to read, is that wrong? Yes. The fuck? How is that? You know what? You make me want to go out and find E-Feds and purposely write about people just to piss people off. Because right. that's, what's the, you're not, it's like masturbating. All you're doing is stroking off your own ego. Okay? I don't love that I you're mean, tonight. We, you have ego. I have ego. We all have ego. But you know what? We all have enough talent, comments, read. One of the worst things you can do as a commissioner is book matches without knowing what your people are up to. You don't know who they're fighting with. You don't know what they're doing. I book matches based on heat because I read posts. I read stories. I understood what was going on. If I'm having a fight with Max Entropy, I don't have to worry about Max Entropy selling my, and Bill selling my character, excuse me, selling my character value because Bill knows my character. Gino knows Storm. You know Storm. Chance knows Storm. Eve Riley knows Storm. You know, Valentine knows Storm. They all, Kansas Kid, who I barely had any interaction with until he came over, even he knew how to sell Storm. Without even trying it, it's not right. that hard. So this golden rule of eat, man, you got. Ugh, I, I, you know what? I love when you get worked up, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm because it's ridiculous. I'm telling you right now. Yes, we want to expand the game and we want to have better players. But I'm going to tell you what: if you have such thin skin, then me walking down to the ring and hitting your character in his widow head with a widow chair is too much for your precious little ego to handle. I don't want you around because you're not bringing anything to the table right? to have some other. And by the way, who wants to sit around and write other people's matches? Where's the fun in that? You know, I mean, one of the things I like doing, one of the beauties of writing is to have a match with Alan and Alan, you know, backdrop, drop kick forearm shiver what okay and now he ends the post and he's got storm down and he's got him in a you know a, a, a half crab i have to figure out how to get out of that okay but while i'm figuring out how to get out of it i also have to make sure that i'm not coming off like some one-sided hero like oh i did not feel any pain i will merely kick you off and then beat you unmercifully until it's your turn to post no i have to have give and take and i have to make you you, you put me in a position and likewise if i you know I may put myself in a position at the end of the post where Alan has the advantage and then you return the favor. It's the creativity that drives it. But just sitting there writing promos and having nobody answer. Could you imagine turning on Raw one night? Right? I mean, not that I watch it anymore because it's terrible. I'm sorry. It is. But could you imagine coming to a regular cutting a promo and then you're just like, okay, I'm done. 
and then walk out of the ring and nothing happens. What's the crowd going to do? Stupid. Sorry, go ahead. No, don't apologize. First of all, everybody else is with you. They're totally on board. And second of all, uh, th this is why I have you on, right? Like I, I try to understand that they play a different game than us and I try to be respectful, but at my core, I also defend the position. And, and I think, you know, if you saw the podcast I did with Mikey from the EFED podcast. Um, I haven't watched that one yet, but I want to. Yeah, he said the same thing. He said, don't try and be accessible and do what we do. Like stick to what makes you guys unique and celebrate it. We just didn't know at the time that it meant things like the golden rule. And, and so, you know, there's Tony Robes trying to, you know, put a little of something, a little bit of something into a match here to prep for Devin's match there. Yeah. And it blew up like he went over and, took advantage of somebody's mom while she was passed out drunk. Like it, I mean, it really went crazy. Um, pretty weak. The only golden rule that there needs to be for e-fetting is be creative, be interactive, improve yourself. And if you're not good at writing, get good at writing because Jesus Christ, you couldn't have more teachers available to you. Right. I mean, cause I've said it before. My first post was storm was a block paragraph. No breaks, no nothing, just a block. It was terrible. Snap Taylor sends me an email and says, hey, man, you know basic HTML? Nope. He taught me how to do it. He gave me some pointers. I watched him. I watched Barrister. I watched Lars. I watched you. I watched a bunch of other people. And you learn. You get better. I mean, all of us do. If you go back and you look at the stuff that you and I were writing back in 2000 and you compare it to what we were writing in 2016, it's just, it's, not even comparable. Right. Just be creative. Totally. I don't understand how you can have fun e-fetting because you know what that tells me. This is what it tells me. I like. I want to watch your. Here's an example. I want to watch the podcast for FedEx because I'm interested in what you have to say. What Bill says, Lar, Tim, Omega, you know, Root, everybody, Gino, uh, XS, whoever. Well, maybe not XS, but I still love him. But anyway. Um. But I watch it because I want to be informed. I want to find out things I didn't know. I want to find out what guys think about stuff. But there's other people, and I'm not saying this is true for anybody who's watching. Or, but there are people out there who are watching the podcast simply for one. Oh, let me fast forward. No, let me fast forward. No, let me. Oh, they're talking about me. That's that's why you role play with no interaction because all you want to do is read about how awesome you are. That's called you have a frail ego. That's called your self-confidence sucks, okay? I mean, the golden rule for e-fetting should be interact, have fun, be creative. Right. Not don't write my character because, you, you know. I'm with you. I, I do think that that's the case. I also know that we're in the minority. I think that's okay. I don't mind being in the minority. Well, we grew uh, up the majority in different... is wrong more often than it's right. Yeah, but, and, but we also grew up in a different, in, in, a, in a different system. We grew up in a different generation. We grew up in a, yes, we did. We grew up, we are the attitude era. We were the attitude era. That's right. That's you know, right. and, but, and, and I'm glad we did because I, I would have, I would have never gotten far. It's like, who just wants to read about themselves all the time? Yeah, I think that's right. I, um, I saw, and, and I think this is something like Twitter went crazy on robes and, and, you know, consent, consent, consent. Uh, so I'm just going to say this, and, and I, I don't care who's listening. When you cheapen a real issue, and consent when it comes to things like such sexual conduct is a real issue, and there's yes. real purpose for people to be talking about that. Yes. And you take that and co-opt it because somebody used your fake wrestling character in a fed you're never going to go to, in a post you're never going to read. Mm -hmm. You're the problem. Yes. Yeah, you are. You're not wrong. You're not wrong on a single thing. And I and I told you before we even started, if any of those guys from any of these other EFEDs happen to drop in and watch and they're sitting there, oh, my God, I can't believe what he's saying. Well, you know what? Grow a thicker skin and stop being a pussy, okay? And right. if you don't like that, eat a bag of dicks. There you go.
I would rather play. I would rather play this game with ten fucking creative people than be stuck with a bunch of freaking soft skinned pussies who are. Like, I want to make sure my character looks so good. I mean, even back in Slam, and I know you ran into him. I had people. I started out in IRCW, and I got into a feud with a guy named. My very first feud was with a guy named Double A, real, real original. It says the guy who used to get compared to an X Man because he shows Storm. But he and I got into a feud one time, and he made a stable called, like, and I don't remember if I'm saying this correct, it was Monsters of something, like Monsters of Mayhem or something. Well, I just did what came natural, and I went, oh, what are you going to do? Call your mom? Your stable's called Mom. I rode this kid into the ground so hard, I made him quit. And you know what? I was... Pat, I loved it. And I know you guys covered that topic. It's not a great idea that you chase people off. But back in CyberSlam, we had an unlimited supply of people who had really thin skin. And it was, it was, I mean, you you reveled in it like I made someone quit again today. You know? Yep. Um, but that's the kind if, if that's what you are and it's just what you want to do, then go play with them. If you want to come and play with real people with real creative juices and 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 innovation. You come play with, with, with you guys, you know? Yeah. I was going to say us, but since I'm not playing, I mean, you know. Hey, listen, you're a legacy player. You get to say this. And you're a legacy commissioner, so you definitely get to talk about it, right? Oh, we, I appreciate that. We have launched Federation X uh, twice to great success, both times. And yep. uh, in the course of that, there are four founders. There was the original founders, and then the next time through, uh, you know, Bruce was out and, and you were in. Bruce was busy being some kind of big shot professional news reporter uh, for sports for ESPN. I and miss you, Bruce, just so you know. Yeah, man. I miss you. Big Absolutely. Time. Um, so that was like, that was great. And, and we had those good runs. And if I could, and we're still thinking about it. There may be other places. We may be advertising or barking up the wrong tree. You know, we were talking the other day and I said, maybe the answer is that we really do start looking at other games, not wrestling, where mm -hmm. people like to do rolling role play and just go and say, hey, you guys are great at this. Is anybody at all interested in wrestling because we're looking for additional players? Mm -hmm. That might be a better answer for us than knocking on EFED's door and looking for the one in a hundred EFED players who actually wants to write more than just a promo. I mean... I don't know. I mean, I'm, uh, maybe maybe we are a different breed of people, but I don't know about you, but I like talking shit. And you can't talk shit in a pro... I mean, you want to talk shit because you want to get shit from somebody so you can talk more shit, not so you can go, okay, I'm going to run you down, run you down, run you down. Okay, and then I left and nothing ever bad happened to my character because, yay! No, I, mean, I don't have time for that. You right. guys shouldn't have time for that either. And you should not be kissing anybody's ass to get those kind of people to, you know, just... But that's just me. Listen, I I know that we all think it would be great to see the growth of the game. I totally agree. But I'd also tell you, there's enough of us that we still talk to that aren't playing right now that if they just played, Eric, I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. uh, if they just played, like we don't necessarily need new players. We need our players to come back and play again. And, and we already have 20 plus really talented players playing right now. I said the other day, Tim and I were talking about, I think he put a post up for people like, if everybody bought one half of one more player back, we'd be at 30. And when was the last time you saw a, a Fed with 30 really good writers going? Like maybe the FedEx launches? Like Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, see when I when I launched CWA back in the day, but that's because it was very easy to assemble that talent pool because they had nowhere to go. Right. When I did uh, you know, NGPW, again, it's easy when you have the contacts and the people to come, but that was in our heyday when we were all, you know, super active. Right. Um, you know, I mean, nowadays, if you get four or five posts up a week, that's to me is considered, that's a lot good. of work. Yeah, it's good. You know, back when, back when we were all in the slam or when wrestle started, some of us didn't have full-time jobs or wives or kids or responsibilities, you know? Yeah. Um, totally right. 
people go through life changes. We've got lots of people who are younger when they started playing and then they got into college years that put a strain on them. Then they got their first job. Then in Valentine's case, they became a teacher and had to worry about, you know, whether or not they really should be shaping the minds of young people. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> right. That's a scary thought. <laughs> I think we all need to understand this. Valentine is shaping the minds of young people and we were the people who shaped his mind when he was young. That's even more terrifying. That's terrifying. That's, That's right. That's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So uh, there's a couple other things that we wanted to dig in and talk about. But before we get to them, I know you said earlier, hey, I have a like a surprise question for you to answer. Do you want to get into that? I, do. Now, I am uh, not prepped for this. So let's he, do it. He is not prepped. I swear to God, he's not prepped. And let me grab my little notebook because I am prepped. Because I figured, so just so you know, the other day we had a little quick session and he gave me kind of an idea. Here's what we're going to talk about. Here's what, and of course, we've completely running on tangents have gone all over the place and not really stuck to that script. But he's going to ask me something later. And now I came up with something to talk about with him. And right. my question for you, and I have my list for you. Top, and I, I, I don't know if this has been done yet because I haven't watched all the podcasts. So hopefully it hasn't been done yet. Your top five times you gave, and I'm not, when I say heat, I ain't talking about in-game. I'm talking about X-Pac heat. I'm talking about heat, heat. Yeah. Your top five times you gave or got X-Pac type heat. Okay. So I think everybody knows my number one X-Pac type heat was uh, Rassel's final death and mm -hmm. uh, an ice hog telling me that uh, I could have it for not even for $11 billion. <laughs> he closed his game and I didn't even know he was doing it and he felt the need to take a shot at me on his way out the door is mm -hmm. clearly my number one X-Pac type heap. Um, let's see, when else have we had some, some of that good heat? I mean, I've certainly given... Uh, I well, if you uh, need to think about it. I'll, I I can throw in a couple of mine if you need to. Yeah, to throw think. a couple of years in while I while I think about this. Okay, so heat moments where I got some X Pac type heat. Okay, I'm going to save my number one because there's a person who's watching that's going to be included in this because I'm going to sure. throw him under the bus. Um, burnt heat I had with burnt. There was nothing more real than that. Um, he. Yeah. And it's a shame, and I don't mean to. And I don't mean to talk ill of those who passed, because I did. I, I did hear about that, and you know, we were friends. Yeah. But uh, I had some real. He, he he did not forgive me, as far as I know, never forgave me for us leaving. And I said it once, and I will continue to say I don't have any regrets that I took every that you and I took everybody with us, because we did okay. everything we could, but. We didn't speak very much after that. And when we did, it was not pretty. Yeah. So that's, that would be my number, my number five. And I'm sorry, I have to put on my reading glasses because I'm old. Um, we touched on it earlier. The uh, Kitty thing, Vigilante and the Blood Brothers. Yep. That was some real heat. It was. And I got that heat. I, I took the heat for that. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to speak too long on that. Now, something else, and this is something people may not know about my number three. When Cyber Slam closed, and if I remember correctly, Lars tried to keep it going for a bit. Well, I think they gave you guys like a month reprieve when they first closed the doors. Some, it was something along those lines, but I'd already committed to going to, to, to wrestle. Right. Barn had already given me the go ahead to create my fed, which by everybody knows the Canadian wrestling Alliance was my baby and will always be my baby. Yeah. And I created that Lars on the other hand was trying to keep the doors open. And I remember him telling me, you know, you stay, I'm like, I've already committed. I'm going to go over there. They're going to let me create my own fed. I'm sorry, brother, but that's just the way it is in my stead. And I believe I was running the CRF at the time. I had only been promoted to the CRF like a month before they had closed. Just a dick move all by itself. Yes. They put another person in charge of the CRF who contacted me and just lost their shit. 
so mad at me because I kept taking everybody. And you, I, and I don't remember what his commission name was, but you might remember this person as the player, Brad Rhodes. Brad Rhodes gave, and I'm going to tell you something, despite what he may say now, that man hated me for years because of that shit. We, we, we finally got to a point where we were amenable and we kind of got okay, along okay. But you talk about something. I used to get some of the most nasty emails and text messages or instant message. You're taking everybody. I'm like, duh. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Sorry. You're in, you're, you're, I mean, you're the equivalent of Blockbuster and I'm over here at Netflix, bro. Sorry. And then I'll stop and I'll give you my last. Day. I'll give you, let you go ahead and go. All right. So. I got a couple ideas that have come up and, and, you know, probably could go more than five deep as I think about this. Um, some of the heat that I've given or gotten uh, is with people I genuinely love. Uh, Tim and I have had a couple of blowouts on some stuff and, and it left the game and became like a, you know what, o this Fed can only hold one of us right now. That's how I ended up. Um, uh, going back to wrestle with the talent is is that there was a blow up and 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 I was legitimately angry. Um, you know, in retrospect, it was dumb. Um, in retrospect, I still think his position on it was wrong, <laughs> but the heat was unnecessary. But it was real at the time, yeah. and and you know, I think about that. Um, I I do have some memories like you of like saying to somebody like. Why don't you come play here and watch in a Fed empty and having a commissioner just lose their shit? Um, there's there's a few of those. I think um, I think certainly a couple of them were like judging related. Like I took some heat uh, for judging and I gave some heat because of judging. I don't know that they all hit the the radar, but there's a couple we've continued to laugh about over the years. Certainly, Stoner Boy was one of them with with Titus. Um, mm. uh, certainly the, the kitty quit because they didn't like the way <laughs> like, you know, those are some, some classic ones. Um, I think the, I think one of the ones that I would point to as probably top three, and I don't know where I would rank it, although I remember being pretty angry at the time was the corporate America swerve. Like I was not happy with that deal. Um, and not because I didn't love a good swerve, because I what? love a good swerve. Yeah, that's I right. I don't know what you're talking about. But, but the corporate America swerve frustrated me because I was certain we were going to take the network down. Certain enough that I broke my own rule and put money in the ATM, which I don't do. Um, and then to get swerved and know that I wasted my money, I was, I was legit. There was some white heat going on. I was pretty pissed about that stuff. Um there was fallout. It, For sure, there was fallout. Again, that's what my number one is. Yeah, <laughs> I'll talk about. I'll talk about it in a minute. Go ahead. That's right. And, and so, but here's the thing. Again, I think some of the heat that I think about, and maybe not the stuff with Burnt, and maybe not the stuff with Hog, but some of the heat that I think about um, is only possible because I like the person. And so the heat comes from the fact that. You know, there's an emotional reaction. Do I get emotional when Ice Hog goes off and calls me a dick? It do I don't even blink. I just keep drinking. Like, what? It doesn't matter. It, but it, some of that heat that really blew up is about that kind of stuff. And and the only other one I'll tell you about um, happened on the board of Doom, and uh, Burnt went at Bruce, and I lost my shit on him, and and I called him out. And like, I wrote a book about every unsavory aspect of his character. And Bruce was like, dude, I'm good. You don't have to do this. And I'm like, that, right? Like, he doesn't like me. He can come at me. But he went right. at you. And that's not a thing that's going to stand. And I went right. off. Um, and Bruce was just like, this is why we're, you know, bros. Like, this is, this is why we're always going to be friends. Because if he'd said that about you, I'd have gutted him too. Right? Yeah. And so... Those are probably some of the bigger ones. There were lots. Like, make oh. no mistake. I had arguments with Jordan. Uh, the the big blow up over somebody going in and figuring out how to change the URL and actually get into the recordings and listen to a recording. I had of a call with Jordan that I recorded without his permission mm -hmm. because it was funny. And before I could get his permission to share it, they had shared it. Like, 
Oh, wow. That pissed me off a lot. That's that's not cool. That pissed me off a lot. No, well, you know, like I clearly was the one in the wrong. I recorded Jordan without his permission, but I did it because I knew his rant was going to, he was going to get over it and the rant would be funny one day. And then other people got to it before I could say to Jordan, hey, like, are we over it so that I can share this? Jordan was actually super cool about the fact that other people got to it. He handled it really, really well. Um, I didn't. I was angry. So yeah. there's some of them. There's. I'm sure there's more. The more we talk about them, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that. Oh, I yeah, I lost two. my shit there, too. Yeah. I got, I got two left. And unfortunately, I was not the one giving the heat. I was the one getting the heat. But it's, it's it, it, and it's significant enough for me to, that I put them up there. Number number two on my list was the king of wrestling. I took a lot of heat for that because, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and, and, and one day maybe I hope to remedy this, but I don't know if I ever will. I, I can't beat Jeff. I'm good, but I'm not, I, I don't think I'm that good. But I believed, I believed in that run I made with the superstar title and, and the king of the king of the wrestling, I thought I could do it. And then I screwed up because I was running out of time and I posted his entrance and I knew I screwed up. And I just screwed up even more and more. And I, what I thought was spinning something was me basically no selling something that Jeff had done. And it was, it, and if you go back and you read it, yes, there's some quality material for me, but if you go sure. back and read it, there's a man grasping at straws. Okay. And when it was done and I lost, I whined and I bitched and I got to the, and, and I was going to the judges and I was going, Man, but look, he no sold this and he did that. And, and and I was trying to cover up my own mistakes. And everybody was getting and I'm gonna tell you something. If you go back and you read, you go back and you read that match, Jeff got mad at me, and you could tell. And he had every justification. And it was not, I'm mad at you because the, it was because he expected more out of me. He knew he knows I know how to play the game, and I didn't play the game. I got desperate and I tried to grasp his stuff. And not only did I make him upset, but the people who judged the match were upset with me. Jordan spent two days trying to talk me off of a ledge. Okay. So that was that was number that was number two. My number one white hot X Pac heat moment was when Bill made me swear corporate America. <clears throat> Oh, Bill, I mean, it was Bill's idea. I just lost you. I don't know. I, if you're you're fine. I was just resetting my camera. It was Bill's idea. And I know you're watching, Bill. I know you're watching. It was your idea. And I just went along with it. Only because I didn't like what, what was it? Was it Sean Juan 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 or Juan Sean? It was Juan Sean. You guys made us team up with him. And Bill said, let's swerve with him. And I'm like, I can't stand this fucking guy. I'm with you. And then later on afterwards, and if you remember the post that came afterwards between me and you, you couldn't have been more out of character on an in-character board no than when kidding. we were going at each other. And I'm all mad. And then you tell me, you know how much money I spent? And then there was that moment that I didn't tell you about. But if we had these cameras like we have right now, you would have seen me go, Ooh, I'm yeah. sorry. I fucked up, but it was Bill's fault. He's the one who came up with the idea. So blame it on Bill, not me. Bus over Bill, back the bus up, turn left over top of him. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, this that's water under the bridge. We, we've we all talked it through. I, honestly, historically looking back, obviously the money's gone. What do I care? Uh, that we didn't end the network run when we could have. There are a lot of, you know what, in all seriousness, there were a lot of regrets over doing that. And I know, and, 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 and I know Bill knows it's all in fun, but, but I mean, 
if I'm going to sit here and be honest, there were moments that, you know, right after we did it, of course, Bill and I were like a couple of giggling schoolgirls. We're like, hee, 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 we to them. Oh, this is going to be great. We're going to get all kind of heat. But in hindsight, if I could go back and change it, I definitely would have. Yeah. So Bill's throwing it all at Tim's feet, right? Bill's saying, it's not really my fault. It was my plan, but I only planned it because Tim told me there was no way I could do it. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, I already threw somebody under the bus, so Bill's throwing somebody, okay, we can all throw everybody under the bus. It's a chain reaction of people being thrown under the bus. See what I did there? Chain reaction. Yes, the one person in the entire world who thought I'd beat you in a match. Uh, yeah. Also, um, we've talked about that match before. So I will say this. I think the... Um, I think the... King of Wrestling, like one day we'll do a King of Wrestling again, I think. And and when we do, we're going to have to figure out how to sequester the judges. <laughs> like, yes. We need to, a way to make sure nobody can talk to them. That was the worst part of the King of Wrestling. You were just getting lit up from all sides by people who wanted to talk about their match. Oh, my God. I used to, I mean, as a commissioner, but I mean, went back in FedEx when I was making cards or I was, maybe I wasn't making the cards, but I was judging. What do you mean I didn't do this? Dude, I mean, it's one person's opinion, okay? I, nobody, Certainly nobody died and made me the end-all, be-all of what's a great story writing. I mean, hell, I've got my own punctuation and grammar error problems, too. I mean, I only got a C in English when I went to high school. I'm no, I'm no expert. But, I, you know, hey, it's I know what I like, and I tell you what I like, and I tell you what I'm looking for, and if you don't do it, you don't do it. For me to, I mean, I'm, I'm calling it what it is. For me to go to the judges and complain about losing to you was a complete bitch move. It was a complete bitch move. I, I love that you're so, you know, honest about these things. Hey, before we get into some of the stuff that we, we had scheduled, I have, I have some surprise questions for you. All right. Comes prepared, right? Awesome. So I know one of the things you were super interested in and, and really humbled by was to hear Tim talk about how you were at the top of his commissioning list. And, and it got me to thinking, what does your favorite commissioner list look like? What is my favorite commissioner? Oh my God. Okay. So uh, number, if I'm going to, I'll do, I'll do a five. I'll do a top five. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Give me five. <clears throat> Barrister. Okay. Judge is who he went by as a commissioner. He yep. was a commissioner by RCW. He saw something in me. He helped me out. And, and, and he, you know, I liked the way I, I learned a lot from him about booking by heat and, and, you know, the things that she needed to do. Number four would probably be Papa Guido. Again, he took a chance on me by bringing me up from IRCW to CWF. I think it was. I think CWF. that's right. Papa Guido is CWF. Because Ed yeah. was under him. Number three would definitely... Wait, before you go on, okay. Paul Vane's, uh, Alistair really wants to know if one of your favorite commissioners was Hammer. Oh, he's Paul number one on my list. Are you kidding me? Yeah, straight at the top, Paul. And by number, number one, one. Made a completely different list of com commissioners that nobody wants to play under. By the way, much love to you, Alistair, man. I love you, brother. Blood brothers for life, even if it was a short stint. But uh, number three would be CFL and Sanity Clause. <laughs> I can't, I can't keep, I tried to keep a straight face. I can't do it. No, Sanity Clause was terrible. The worst, the worst mistake I, hey, you want to come to the Legends Fed? Sure. You're terrible. Can I go back now, please? Um, number three would probably be, Ridgeway. I liked what he did. That's a great choice for number three. I liked what he did for FedEx. I enjoyed him in FedEx. I think number two, and and when I say number two, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a split. Um it's gonna be a, a, a three-way split. And I know that's kind of a cheap way to do a top five, but it is what it is. So and two of, these, two of these people, I did not play under them as commissions. Well, one of them I did slightly, but 
I didn't get a chance to play with them at like be in their feds, but I saw what they were doing. Yeah. Dr. Keebler, very innovative, very creative. Yeah. Titus. Yeah. I thought, I thought Titus did an exceptional job as a commissioner. And you're going to hate me for this, but for some reason, I just, I'm sitting here rattling off this list. I completely forgot your commissioner's name. It's on the screen. You could just Grayson. read it. Thank you. God, my brain just went blank. I'm drinking too much of this damn Canadian whiskey. The most forgettable Grayson. commissioner ever. Grayson. Grayson would be number on, on in, in that three-way tie. Um, and again, I did work under you a little bit, not as much as I wanted to. I mean, Fed. I don't really count FedEx because you know I'm part of that that, that the power base. So it's kind of hard to you know what I mean. Right. right. We but, did it but, as a team for sure. But still, and of course, and this is not me reciprocating the favor. It's just it sure. is what it is. Number one would be Lars. Uh, because before I even started, before I even had a character with Lars in charge, I was watching the days where he had guys like Viss Major and Gino and, you know, all these, I, I believe Streak Ender was there for a while. Um, some other, I, I don't remember every, it's been a long, I mean, you're talking about a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, we're talking about 20 some odd years ago that we oh. were doing something. Yeah. But Lars, definitely number one. I learned a lot from watching him. Agreed. Um, and I credit a lot of my styles to the, the to the to the five plus two I mentioned. I credit a lot of my styles to those different people. Yeah, I think that's it's true. You absorb a lot when you play under good commissioners. And uh, oh, hey, just out of the blue, I was thinking about commissioning, and that totally brought a whole back to. I have some more uh, white heats for you. When I took over my first national in the Slam and changed the space fed to a real fed, I had heat with everybody who was in the space fed, <laughs> like the whole fed. <laughs> people were quitting, people were sending letters to Funky, they lost their shit. <laughs> I have a, I have a C, what was it called, CGW? Yeah, yeah. I have a CGW story because Barrister, Judge, got promoted to that fed and he's like, I, I need you. And I'm like, you need me. Well, I've got this secondary character, Inferno. We can, you know, well, I'm going to call him up. I'm like, cool. What's your Fed like? And he's like, oh, we're in space. And I went, oh, God. And I met Pika, Pika Zap there, who immediately stabbed Inferno in the thigh. And that's, yeah. I so hated CGW. I, I see, uh, I see of commenting. So here's how it went I got the Fed. Uh -huh. I walked in on day one and went, hey, this isn't the shit. We're not in space anymore. My rules are up. This is where we are. And everybody lost their crap. The, like two days later was the promotion to call people up. And yeah. I called up Of Terror and Digsy Brown. And uh, I'm trying to think, uh, was Ice, was uh, Of's partner. I think I called him up. I think I called up the Killer Beat. But I also called up like Death Wish and like guys who were old school who ran with Acid Ed. Yep. And Soothsayer came up. We blew, I mean, the rest of you quit. I called up everybody who mattered and we went off right away. And, and that was, and, and honestly, it was because I remember, I remember when you took that over and I watched from, because I wasn't part of it, but I watched because I'd already left with Inferno. Yep. And it was great because that's, I mean, you, you felt heart sorry for a guy like Judge because, I mean, who, we're in space. Right. I mean, what is this? Friday the 13th part, whatever the hell it was. But Jason's frozen. His Come on, man. This is supposed to be about wrestling. I mean, I know we stretch the bounds of believability. I mean, you and I have killed our characters more time than COVID could have killed people. Okay. Right. And, and, and we, so we can suspend belief, but come on. I don't, I don't need to go to space to, although I should have done a match where we were all completely weightless. That probably would have been really fun to do. It was uh, it was a good time, and and so when I just realized what we're talking about, like being commissioners, like that was my second Fed, and I was so like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Like when Funky gave it to me, and he was like, hey, so I'm gonna give you the space Fed, and I was like, well, it won't be the space Fed for long, and he just laughed. I I had my rules and everything set up, just copy paste. Nope, we're done. We're not in space anymore. End of conversation. Yep.
I mean, every good commission has. Every time I, I had all my rules copied, pasted too. <laughs> okay, I'm here. Click. There's your new rules. There you go. But yeah, um, I was I was very happy when you did that, but I never got a chance to come back up to it. But it was, it was good kinda, times. It needed yeah. to be done. So yeah, it was. Uh, oh, so I started my run in CGW that way. I ended it with white heat as well. So yes. Uh, Somebody had a character, a super creative character named SCSA Stunner. I remember that name. Stone Cold Steve Austin Stunner was the name of the guy's character. And he had an alt. And his alt used to write for the news on the homepage. Mm -hmm. And the alt basically wrote stuff that I was like, that's about me. That was mm -hmm. untrue. So I right, ran it up the ladder and I'm like, hey, you can write and, and in character and all that, but he's flat out lying about me cheating to give people title match. Like this can't be a thing. And they basically, the editor in chief said, oh, you know, like, I don't think he's broken any rules and, and we don't police what they write. Mm -hmm. So uh, I basically said, Hey, so he just writes like a post for you once a week. I, I run a super active Fed for you. And they were like, yeah, no, we're not going to do anything about it or make him take it down. And I was like, cool. Who runs CGW now? Because it's not me. Sorry, I was looking at a text message. No, you're right. I'm sorry. My wife was, um, anyway. Sorry about that. I, I have ADD. I've had it for years. I get distracted real easy. I'm, I'm more than a little aware of that. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. I see. Uh, I see our father out there giving me some some crack about it. Um, so so that was one. Let's talk about this. Let's go top five on this one as well. Off script and unprepared. Okay. Not yours. Okay. Top five favorite characters in the game. Oh, man. <laughs> Unless you'd rather tell me who were the five characters you hated the most. The five? Oh, I could do, I'll do both. I'm brave. I'll do both. Top five characters I hated in the game is see, there was Juan Sean or Sean Juan or whatever his name was. Pika. Couldn't stand him. Still can't. Still can't. Prototype, who can suck my ass. No, actually, you know what? Hold on. We'll get to Prototype. He's not number three. Let's see. Uh, man, I got to really think about that. Well, I'm not thinking about this. While you're thinking about this, let me throw something out. So I see Max Sterling is on watching the podcast. And mm -hmm. I just want to say this. Hey, Max. You made the transition from playing with us to actually being a wrestler. When are you going to come on the podcast and talk about that? Oh, my God. That would be awesome. Right? It's do I know Max Sterling under another name? Yeah, I think you do, but I'm not going to tip you off. Oh, damn it. Come on, man. I'm old. I can't remember any of this shit. Um, back to the guys. Okay, so we said... Uh, we said Juan Sean, we said Pika. I'm hard pressed because there's not a lot of people I dislike, you know, but there are some. I'm trying to think off the top. That's not easy, man. That one got me a little bit. You know what? I'll go with, we'll just jump to number one and I'll fill in the other. Yeah, prototype can suck my ass. That's some serious prototype, like, prototype hate there. No, I mean, legitly, Prototype can eat a giant bag of dicks. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Because back in the day, during the CWF days, I was joining a stable with him and Jericho and someone else. And I swerved them for Bobby Bob's All-Stars. And because I swerved them, Prototype treated me like I was the most idiotic character he'd ever seen. I was stupid. I was no good. I was complete trash. And he held that account. He held that to me till the till the very end. And I can't stand him. 
I don't understand why everybody thinks he's so great. I think he's a piece of shit. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I got number, okay, number two, who I trolled on the board of doom one day and had him convinced that I sent him a John Holmes sex doll. You know who I'm talking about? I'll let you tell, I'll let you tell who I'm talking about. I can't. I can't okay. even. I don't know how you pronounce this stupid name to begin with. Daos, Daos, whatever. D-A-O-S. Yeah. We got into it on the board of doom and the dipshit being an internet, you know, uh, behind a keyboard warrior hero says, oh yeah? Well, you can come on up here and kick my ass then if you think you're such a badass. I'm like, give me your address, dumbass. And he gave me his address. He wrote his address on the board of doom. So I convinced him. And Ebola. Ebola thought I did it. To, I convinced him I sent him a John Holmes sex doll. And I even posted a fake FedEx tracking number. And I hated that guy. Fuck him too. So, and I still, have, I don't know if I have another number three. But yes, those are my top four then for now. If I think of somebody else before we're done, I'll tell you. But I, I don't dislike a lot of people, you know. I get you. Um, I I don't get you. I could fill my list. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I I mean, there were characters that I I could pick a couple people because of the character that they played, but I didn't dislike the person. Sure. Okay, and for that. instance, and I'm not trying to be mean when I say this. I'm sure that the guy behind the person who plays Thor is a lovely individual, but I hated Thor. I hated the character. Because the character's a fucking moron. You Thor know? is just a poor man solo. He is. And, and I mean, and, but I don't dislike the guy behind him. In the, in the other cases, I dislike the people who are role playing the characters. Except for Juan Sean. I just didn't like the character. I don't even know who the hell played him. That's awesome. All right. So we got the ones you didn't like. Tell us who you did like. Um, well, my top guys, and this is going to, you know what? I could have two separate top guys list. I could have my top five Jeff characters. Okay, let's skip them. Give me the rest. I'm interested in the other ones. But, well, I mean, but see, I know I know where you're coming from, but I've told this before, and I will continue to say this till the day I die. Nobody brings the best out in me like you do. I'm glad. Nighthawk, that's, that's Alan Scott, it doesn't matter who it is. Nighthawk, Alan Scott, Joe Power. Well, maybe not Joe. Hey, why you gotta I hate like Joe? Joe? Joe's amazing. I like Joe. I like Joe. I do like Joe, but Alan, and specifically, if I'm gonna be honest and make that top five list, Nighthawk is gonna be on it no matter what. Um, All right, but give us the rest. We're, we're interested in the rest. Who else you got? Emissary. Yeah. Emissary was, God, the kid, I mean, and I don't mean kid because I'm old. He's probably as old as us. I say kid all the time because we're old. You know, that's what we do. It's 50-50. Some of them that are guy, in their 20s now and some of them are our age. That guy was incredible. And he just never, at least during my times when I was with him, he never really got going. Um. Probably my number four favorite favorite character had to be Max. I mean, who doesn't love Max? Okay, so hold on. Because Max has like 50 iterations of Max. He went all Clone Wars, and then we had to deal with Vamp Max and Armani Max and like Suicide Max. and Good old Max. Me too. This one for you. That's the Max. Entropy. That's right. Max Entropy. Right. Um, I love the guy. And he's the only person I know who actually looks like his avatar. He looks like Bam Margera, who yeah. happens to be one of my other – he's like my number one guy. I love skateboarding, and he's my favorite skateboarder. Well, was anyway. But, I mean, Max. Who, who doesn't love Max, you know? So uh, that would be number, number four. This is really hard because you think about all the people you're leaving off the list because you want to make like a top 25 list because it's Oh, no. Really so here's hard. the deal. You're going to name five. And the next podcast, I'm going to specifically talk to all the people you neglected. 
Oh shit, that's that's fucked up, man. <laughs> that's messed up, dude. Um, It'd be a good time. <clears throat> after Max and after Emissary, I would probably have to go with. Some people are gonna like look at this. Some people are gonna roll their eyes, but I don't care. Probably number three would be Faith. Hey man, I, Faith was an impactful character for a long time. I get like it's probably the only female character uh, and Angelica. Probably the only two female characters that I didn't hate. And the thing and the thing about it was is and I know we were good. I was kind of goofing around talking about how awkward it was to write a romantic story with somebody that you knew. But but Eric was different with faith. And 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 what I what he brought some he he was able to bring out a side with Storm. And I mean honestly, I really enjoyed playing with Faith, even though near the end there he just like he, he didn't want to really do faith. And I understand that you get to a point where you don't want to do somebody and 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 you know I can get that. Uh number two. Jesus Christ, man, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Because I know who my number one is, but I I'm, I'm really having a hard Because, again, I don't want to make anybody feel bad because there's, like, so many people I could put on this list. Hey, just so we're clear, if Mav doesn't name you and ignores you and you want to come on in the next podcast and just fire some blasts across Adam, I, I will totally support that and have you on. I'm going to tell you, okay, I'm just going to be, because it's the, and ready, I'm going to preface it, and I know as soon as I say this, you're going to get it, and he's going to get it, and probably some other people will too. The only guy Storm never swerved, and would never swerve, is number two on my list. Genocide. Genocide and Storm have been friends for decades. He's never swerved Gino. Even during the, 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 the Instant Karma Initiative, when he was going after Gino's wife, he told it, you do not put your hands on genocide. He is my friend. Gino would be number two because I was an asshole and a douche before I met Gino, but I didn't become the most manipulative and bastard in wrestling by myself. I learned a lot from my boy Gino. And, of course, my number one is going to be Nighthawk because I <clears throat> that's just by the way super unpopular opinion the popular thing is to hate Nighthawk as a character excess hates him uh I'm pretty sure Colt made some comments about like it's pretty popular to bag on Nighthawk he hasn't been around in ages but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you and you know what I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna tell you exactly why Nighthawk one of the things that I like about role playing is it gives me an avenue. I've often said that, and I know, you hear me out before I before you think about where I'm going with this. I often look at Storm as the, one of my taglines is the real, the real face, it's from a Linkin Park song, the real face inside is right beneath your skin. Storm is the person I want to be sometimes. Not the guy, the guy who stabs everybody in the back, but the person who tells people exactly what he thinks. Now, like, we're here amongst friends, so I'm going to be right. me with you guys. But if I'm out on the street, I'm not going to walk up to, you know, somebody and be like, fuck you, get out of my way. That's, that's not who I am. Storm allows me to be the person inside I want to be sometimes. He, he taps into that dark energy i'm sorry i'm pouring myself another drink this i'm gonna tell you guys right now canadian whiskey i love canada i want to move next door and live next door to jeff mom we got a bar we got space it'll be great it'll be awesome but uh storm allowed me to work through some things that i had issues with and when i came across nighthawk and the religious aspects of nighthawk because for the longest and 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 jeff will tell you because not only do we talk about wrestling but we we talk about god sure. we've we've talked about those things and there was a time in my life where i said no there, there can't be a god not with all the stuff that goes on in this world there can't be there's no way 
Um, and I was able to explore my, the, the religious, the religious aspect, because if you go back and you read a lot of stuff with Nighthawk and Storm, there's a lot of religious aspects to it. For instance, his son, Sean, was raised in an orphanage by a priest who turned out to be Hunter. Okay. Um, Pariah. When he was going on his thing, he was going to extinguish Eve Riley, the, the, I believe he called him the beacon, and he was going to extinguish Gilgamesh, and he was going to extinguish Nighthawk, and he did it with the three, what he called the three from 30, which was the three silver daggers that were made from the 30 silver coins that were given to Judas to betray Jesus. All that came from Nighthawk. All that stuff came from the interactions between Jeff and I. And I don't care if you like religion or if you think it's hokey or whatever. I love the work that we did together. And I was able to explore Christianity through Nighthawk and Storm. And Storm has even had, you, you, you probably go back and you look, and there were, there were moments where I tried to make Storm redeem himself for all the terrible things he's done. But at the end of the day, Storm's a douche, and I got to be Storm, you know? I mean, I think that's Gino's life story at the end of the day. Let me tell you what I did, and 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 Jeff and everybody else can attest to this, and excess will admit it. I'm not the one who gave myself the moniker the most manipulative man in wrestle that eventually turned into the most manipulative man in wrestling. That was given to me by Johnny Excess and Static. Yep. Static and I had the and every and here's the beauty of it. You know how many times I would swerve somebody and I would do this swerve, and you'd have guys like Jordan and Erica. We saw it coming, but you keep falling for it then. Then I must be good at what I do, you know? And But anyway, Nighthawk brought the best out. And, and whether you like it or you don't like it, whether it's your cup of tea or not, it's some of the best stuff that I did. Jeff brings out a side of me creatively that just sometimes – I get lost in it. I mean, I, the, the match that you and I had in CWA for the Canadian title, oh, the one nice. I said I didn't win, and you, we both know I didn't win. I mean, because I followed you the whole only match. Only one of us got the belt. That's all I'm saying. That match started out, and our chain reaction had us in some stupid jousting. We were supposed to joust, and of course, I'm not going to take this seriously. So the, the 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 match starts out, and I had literally have Storm glue himself to the saddle so he can't fall out of it. And then here comes Jeff with Nighthawk. I wish there was an archive of that match because you have never seen a match take a 180 like that match did. And it got super, super serious. And it was it was epic. And it, if we could include that in the legendary rewrite section, I would put that in there in a heartbeat. Right? So Nighthawk, yes. That's why I put Nighthawk as number one. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, I do also need to tell you, because I'm super entertained by it, I've seen it scrolling by, that instead of referring to uh, Faith as wheelchair Eric, they're just going to refer to you as legs Eric. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm legs Eric? All right, cool. We are messed up. All right. So... As, as we get, you know, close to two hours and probably we'll, we'll do this again. We have so much stuff to talk about, but we, you I, know, I told, I told Jeff before we started and I said, we could go for hours. Right. I got so much. There's, I mean, 20 years of history. We could do this podcast for the next month and not touch every subject. It's a hundred percent true. Um, I wanted you to, to think about so that we could do a top five because you got some dirt. You got some dirt other people don't know about. And so what I've asked is I've asked Eric to close out with us by sharing the top five scandalous secrets he has about one of the games that we've played in. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's, well, I mean, you know, a couple of these are obviously going to be ones that everybody knows about. So obviously for me, the number one, number five is going to have to be, for those of us who were in the slam, the move list, the right. move list scandal. I mean, this is one generally known to everybody, but it's still, it's top five because you're talking about, you know, back in the day, it was, it was, 
you had to you had to know your you, you know your you 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 picked your uh you picked your style of character brawler high flyer you had to know the moves you had to kind of get them in the right order and then maybe you won but then then somebody discovered the list the the winning list and it got out and people started winning ultimate championships uh who didn't deserve it <clears throat> douse <clears throat> anyway ebola uh but uh so the the move list would be number number five. Like you said, you guys, there are probably that's a, good one. that's a good one. It's a famous one too. Uh, number two or number four, and I touched on this earlier, was the fact that, and and I'm serious. Wrestle made money. I don't care. Ice Hog can come on here, which I know you won't. He can come on here and tell you something different. And I'm sure if Burnt would probably still lie, he might come on here and tell you something different. I don't know. I'm telling you right now, I saw it. I know how much the servers cost to run for a month. They were making money hand over fist. And anytime they told you they weren't, they were lying to you. Um, the next one would be... Uh, and I don't know if you would consider this a scandal. This probably should have been number five because this is going to come off sounding a little bit like ego. And again, we've touched on this tonight. I don't know if I'm the first to do it because it was a big no-no, but I'm the one, I, as far as I know, I'm the one who started using characters in his own fed. Oh yeah. Okay. Cause that was a big no-no for a long time. That was a really big no-no, but I didn't care because all my friends were in my feds and the people I wanted to play with were in my feds and I didn't want to sit over there. So, I mean, I know the, the, I mean, these aren't really ground shattering or anything like that. I get that. But the next two, the next two ought to blow you away because for a long time, a long time, especially after a certain individual showed up in a WWE ring called Naked Midian. And Jeff doesn't even know about this one. So this might be a bombshell for him. People started going, well, I think WWE's taking our stuff. Because naked Midian, naked man, right? Well, I don't know about anybody else. And if somebody wants to challenge me on it, that's fine. But I'm pretty sure I'm the one who came up with the idea of the hell in the cell. So color me surprised when Shawn Michaels and Undertaker had a match in something that I had posted about in my Fed. But the bombshell here that you don't know about is that Bert and I, and this is 100% confirmed, Shane McMahon used to come to Wrestle.net, and we verified him through his email. So all those times that you thought that the WWE was stealing your stuff, I'm pretty sure you were right, because I don't know why Shane McMahon would be coming to Wrestle.net. We verify his email. It was Shane McMahon who was coming to Wrestle.net, who had an account and was coming and looking around our stuff. Wow. That's number two. That's kind of big news. Well, you know, I mean, Bert never wanted to say anything about it, but, and I've sat on that for a long time. But, and do, do I have definitive proof that they stole stuff? I don't have definitive proof, but right. you tell me why Shane McMahon is hanging around. And e fed. I'm just saying, you know, take it for what you want. The number one, though, revolves I around. Saw a comment. Maybe he played. Hey, maybe he did. You don't know. I mean, it, okay. it's possible. The number one uh, on the list, this one might surprise a lot of people. Maybe not if you listen to some older podcasts, because I did address this at one point in one of the older podcasts. But again, because I was on a phone and you kept getting wah, wah, wah. I sounded like Charlie Brown's parents when we were talking. The move list uh, from C-Slam. I got the move list from somebody. And you're never going to believe who I got the move list from. One day I get an email. And the title of the email is, Burn This and Then Your Computer. And I open it up, and who is it from? It's from Chevalier or Chevalier or however you want to say his name. And he says to all the knights, this is the move list. Use it. 
And he said, burn us and then your computer. So Mr. Self-Righteous, Mr. We do everything honorably. We do this. And I'm going to tell you something. Up until about four years ago, I had that email saved for the longest time. Because are you kidding me? Chevalier or Chevalier, whatever the hell you want to call him. He's going to talk about how terrible everybody is for using the move list. And yet he sends it to his knights and tells you to burn it? No. So that's probably something a lot of people didn't know. And I wish I had the email today because if I did, I would show it to you right now. But I I, I mean, I'm a straight shooter. I think you guys know that. And I'm not making – that was 100% real. That's awesome. What a, what a great finish to your top five. Now, uh, I did tell people – that my special guest tonight was going to answer questions. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. Except I'll, I'm not going to, no, you can't have sex with my belly button. And no, we're not going to, nope. no so, snoring. No, nope, no boner questions, no snoring. I'm super blurry right now. My camera has trouble tracking me. Give me a second. No, uh, you're good. So, so let's do this. Uh, let's, let's see the questions. So go ahead, put them up on the chat. And we'll pull out the ones that, you know, as we catch them and the chat, chat scrolls, so we won't catch them all, but let's, let's get them. I know some people brought some questions and I will ask Mav your questions and we'll get your answers before we wrap up tonight. I will, I will try while I sit here and while I sit here and I hold my, one of my many titles on my shoulder and think about how good I look with my title versus how Tony Robes looks with his. All right, so the first, you, question, Tony. the first question was from Tony, and he says, hey, so when are you coming back, and I love you too? <laughs> Tony, dude, let me tell you something, man. I am your big – you and Dawson are awesome, yeah, that, first of all. When am I coming back? Um, I, you know – All, all seriousness, there's there's a part of me that wants to be there's a part of me that wants to be creative. I can't. I I, I, I think I left in I think I left in twenty. Well, when was the the King of Wrestling? Was what twenty twelve? I think, and I left. When I think I came back in twenty. I think I came back in twenty thirteen for a little bit, and I left, and I came back in twenty fourteen when we started this all up again, and or twenty sixteen, and I left. There's a part of me that wants to come back, but there's a part of me that's afraid I'm just going to pull up stakes and I'm not going to stick around very long. And I don't want to be known as the guy who just came and went and came and went. Or maybe I'm trolling you. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. That's so, my answer. Uh, so that's a good answer. I'm going to throw this out. Hey, Weedy, I saw you had a question, but the other people all answered and it scrolled off before I could get to it. Will you repost it? Because I think it was a good question. I want to ask it. I love hey weed. By the way, weed. No, I love weed. Weed's always been another one of those guys. That, and you know what? I'm mentioning this now just because I thought about it. Because you mentioned his name. He's another guy who every time I went somewhere, weed man was always one of those guys, one of my regulars. Hey, Tommy. Uh, so like Cole asks, what fake wrestling characters do you think are gimmicks that would actually do great in real wrestling? <clears throat> Well, I mean, if I have to go just based on my most current knowledge, Tony Rhodes would get over like Clover right now. Right. Um, I know this sounds like the Tony Tony Rhodes love show right now, but I mean, um, somebody that would get over. Honestly, I think, so, especially when you think, and I'm I'm being dead serious when I say this, when you think about the times that we live in where it's being legalized all over the place. I would love to see a character who smokes weed. Yeah. yeah. I would like to see a weed man or a stoner boy. I would like to see, I would, you know what? I Well, I, I was going to say something about delusional day, but I think bringing a dead guy to this side of the ring probably wouldn't get over well. But Listen, uh, I, think, I think these days you could figure out ways to make that work. You could make, I mean, there's a lot of guys who have, I mean, what I like to see here, and, and, and this is a hypothetical, what I like to see somebody like a Johnny Rude on a Monday night, are you fucking kidding me? Fuck yeah, I'd love to see a guy like that. 
in an ECW environment, a guy like Rude would have thrived. I mean, you know, they're, 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 there's a lot of guys that have a lot of gimmicks. Alan Scott would be great. Genio, a guy like Genocide would be great. And, and the thing is, is, you know, a lot of people like to say, well, it's wrestling. It's been done before. But look at some of the creative people that we've worked with over the years. It's not been done before. We do things because we're capable of doing things that other people can't. Right. So as there's writers, a lot of guys we, I think would get over. Yeah, we, we have some freedom as, as writers that are just not having to deal with the real world implications and not having to deal with, like, like if the crowd doesn't respond for three nights in a row, we're not dead. We can, we can find the voice of the character. We have time. Yeah, yeah. Keep the cause. Hey, keep the questions coming. I'm lo I'm loving this. Besides, it gives me more time for me to show off my belt to Tony. So, so I have a question for you since I don't see one right there on on the board right now. Um, you know, you started by saying I think Tony Robes. Later, you mentioned Gino and Allen. Are you not at all concerned that if Tony Robes is in the same place as Gino and Allen, everybody will realize he's just a pale imitation of Allen Scott? Oh. Um I mean, you know, Alan's not around right now, which is why I'm gravitating toward Tony. I mean, if Alan was around, right. I mean, you know. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I mean, I mean, sure. Do I want to buy a box of Haterade? Okay, maybe I do a little bit because he made it appealing. But, you know, between him and Alan, there's no contest. So, hey, here's Wee's question before it disappears again. He said, what was it like dealing with, you know, guys like me who took the game really seriously while you're dealing with your own stuff as a commissioner? Like, how did how did that work for you? Um, it wasn't, and, and, and again, this is 100% honest, it was not hard for me because I have always liked, and again, I don't want to alienate the comedic guys because I love the comedic guys. When I run, and again, I'm going to use video games as a comparison. When I play my video games, I want simulation, okay? When I play a wrestling game, I don't want to arcadey beat down stupid anime. I want to play real, honest to goodness, wrestling. Right. So I like people who take the game seriously. I mean, if you look at the list of names that I rattle off about every time I took a Fed or I was a commissioner, the same people I would bring in. Because that's what I want. It's a game based on wrestling. Now, am I saying that I wasn't entertained by guys in the AOD who did some crazy stuff? I mean, sure, it was entertaining. But I don't particularly want to have a match with a toaster. How am I supposed to sell that, you know? Uh, that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I know I give them a lot of shit. That, but, but it's like with Pika. Who wants to, who wants to wrestle a Pokemon? That's just dumb. That doesn't mean that they don't have creativity or value. I mean, look at look at Dave. I Dave is 130 pounds soaking wet. I had him win a title match by tripping over the rope and falling on his opponent. Okay, and that's funny, but I like the guys who take things seriously. So w when they take things seriously, you know, it can be a little bit. You know, when you're trying to deal with everything, it, you know, it can be a little overwhelming. But I I I like that. I enjoyed that. You know, I love my comedic guys too, but I do like the more serious side. Um, so Omega asked, like, how do you stay so creative for so long? Like, how did you manage to drive that creative flow for, you know, let's face it, almost 20 years? I love, I love specifically that Omega asked me this because I didn't know Omega had a podcast about my favorite form of music. Right. Um, music is my muse. And I am able to stay creative. And, and I'm not going to, you know, I, I, Je and, and I've done this with Jeff before. Like, I'll, I'll go do something. I'm listening to some music, and then I'll hit Jeff up sometimes, and I'll be like, hey, man, I just thought of this character. Music has the ability to drive my creativity. Now, I'm sure Omega knows Kill Switch Engage, and you've heard me mention them before. I can sit down and listen to a Kill Switch album and just close my eyes, and I can literally fill up a notebook with ideas just based off of the mood of the music, the lyrics, and things like that. Music has always been the driving force behind my creativity. I've actually created character, and I said this earlier tonight when I created Carissa, I created her specifically 
because of a of, of a song I heard by an artist. So I've been able to be creative. And, and let me be honest with you guys, too. Now, I know I'm sitting here hemming and hawing about whether I want to come back or not, or I might be trolling you. I know I might, I'm sitting here talking about maybe wanting to come back or not, but in the last 24, you have to remember that I left in 2016 and I haven't done anything wrestling, you know, role play. Right. right. Being back on the site last night, talking to Jeff the last couple of days, my creativity has not had any kind of outlet for the better part of eight years. And it's very easy for me now. I can sit, like, I'm not even kidding you. In the hour before Jeff and I came on, I was sitting in my chair and I'm playing it. I'm, I'm watching YouTube. I'm just watching random videos, listening to music. And I'm just sitting here because I know we're going to do this. And I must have thought up like five characters, like <laughs> one after the other. I don't know where it comes from. I, I, I hated writing when I was a kid. I hated, I hated English class when I was a kid the fact that I enjoy writing just blows my mind I I, I you know what and I'm going to sound like an athlete on a football team when I say this but this is a gift that God's given me right is this ability to come be creative and you know I'm not going to sit here and I've never ever said I'm great I've never said I'm good to me and I'm Jeff will tell you and Lars will tell you and Jordan will tell you I've always said I feel at best I'm just a mediocre writer. I don't feel like I'm really awesome like the rest of the guys. But it's I don't know. That's just it. I mean, but the music, what the music has always been my muse, it's always driven me. And I'm so happy that Omega asked that question, considering that he because I know he knows what I'm talking about. I yeah, know he, he feels does. and he commented that he knows what you're talking about. He's right with you. Hey, Stan Daniels is on. We love Stan Daniels. Stan, I love you. I fucking love you, Stan. Uh, not quite as much as we love Man Daniels, who we haven't seen in a while. Yes. But Stan true. asked the question, when you come back, if you're not already trolling us, who do you think you'd come back as, new character or one of your classic characters? Okay, I didn't want to say anything about this earlier because Jeff and I have talked about this. We were talking about this the other day and we were talking about it tonight. If if I were to come back, at some point, I and I'm going to say this, at some point I do want to come back. I want to come back with Storm because I, and, and I know Jeff is a humble, humble guy. And I, I'm going to tell you something, and I mean this right There's now. There's a lot of laughter going on right now. They can laugh all they want to, and I'm telling you right now, this is not, I'm not like Bill on that one podcast where he's almost falling down from his drinking. I'm still sober, so let they, so hear me when I they say They don't it. believe that they want me to keep you on until you go down like Bill did. I got I got no, look here. I'm hardly drink any of this. I know it looks like it, and I'm not drinking it straight. I'm mixing it, okay? So I'm not that bad, but I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I look at this man I'm talking to right now. He is like a brother to me. I don't have any brothers, but if I had to have a brother, Jeff would be the one I would want to be my brother. Okay. I do. I want to have, he deserves to have the match for King of Wrestling that I didn't I didn't give him the first time around. I want to bring Storm back at some point and I want to give Jeff the match that he deserves. And win or lose, and you know, and I'm not lying right here, I damn sure want to beat him. I don't think I can, but I want you to. You sure can. I'm not going to let you, but you sure can. I can try, okay? If I were to come back, I don't know. Storm is like a comfortable T-shirt yep. you just slip right into. I'm going to tell you right now, if I wanted to, as soon as this podcast was over, I could go on FedEx and I could post with Storm and I would do it after eight years without even missing a beat. Right. That's too easy. There's no challenge to it. So that's how I felt about not just dropping straight back into Allen. I could come back with Sean. Sean, like a glove, yeah. right back into it. Inferno, I could do the same thing. I would probably want to come back as a new character simply to see if I, you know, can I, can I get that lightning in a bottle again? 
Uh, can I, I mean, and I mean, you look at the guys that are playing today, and I don't know everybody, but I've been reading a little bit. Like I said, I was on last night, and I was reading for quite a few hours. And I know Tony's been around for a while. I don't know, and I haven't asked you, I'm not sure who Maverick Dawson actually is, but I know it looks familiar to me, and I really like what he's doing. So I, I want to, hey, I want to clarify. I intentionally didn't tell you who Maverick Dawson is, because I think when you find out, you'll be as amused by this as I am. I probably will, and eventually I'll find out. But And even though he stole my name, I'm kidding. Anyway, um, I mean... Can I get over, can I get over, I mean, even if it's the same people and we don't know who they are, can I get over in the world we're in now? I mean, can I, can I still do that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But if I were to come back, it would probably be as a new character. But at some point, I can't tell you, even if it's just me and Jeff and the forum board and nobody else, Jeff is going to get the match he should have got for me at King of Wrestling back. I'm looking forward the, to it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so I saw a couple of other questions scroll by. I think he answered uh, Elise or Shreddy Mercury's already, which was, you know, are, are you paying attention to what's going on now? You started reading the board. You're not totally caught up, but you've been able to check out some of that. Um, I saw uh, Gina wants to know if you think Person Peoples is a stupid name. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck you, Gino. God damn. Because he knows. He knows what I'm going to say. Yeah. It doesn't, but it doesn't matter whether your name is stupid or not because you, you know, you can. Yeah. Can you get it over is all that matters. It, it, that's it. It, it. It's all that matters. I mean, Toaster got over and your name Toaster. I mean, come on. You know? That's right. Um, do I, would it be, a, would it be a name I chose? Fuck no. But. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I actually, when I saw the name, I was like, that's kind of a stupid name. But if you have the talent, it doesn't matter. I mean, I have a guy named Delusional Dave Diamond, of all things, you know? Right. And Indeed. I get him over, so no. I think the name's kind of silly, but it doesn't matter. If he's got the work and, you know, he does the work, it's good work. I like what I saw, so. That's awesome. Hey, uh, Max Sterling asked, which Russell Fed did you enjoy commissioning the most? Oh, CWA, hands down. Yeah. CW, of course, CW. And, yeah, and to a point, NGBW, because I got to – most commissions go through their 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 journey, and they commission feds that people have commissioned before them. I got the privilege – I and, and I mean this from the bottom – I got the privilege of creating the CWA. I got the privilege of creating – Saturday Night Slam. And then I got the privilege of changing that to Next Gen Pro Wrestling out of Japan. I got to do three things. Now, and, and I'll be honest, I didn't really... I know why we did the Saturday Night Slam thing because it was a tie-in with my friend Scott McLean who did a radio show out of Iowa and that's how we yep. got involved with him. I didn't really feel that tight about that. But, but CWA, Canadian Wrestling Alliance, I mean... We, we did it the right way. Our first match was held in a barn in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And this just goes, this is my affinity for Canada, which is why one of these days I want to move next door, at least down the road from Jeff. We got space for you, man. I, I, I love, I've always loved Canada. Uh, I wanted to do the Canadian Wrestling Alliance. It was my first love, and it will never, ever, I mean, I couldn't love a Fed anymore because – the guys that I had, we, we did our time in a barn. We did our time in a bingo hall. We did, we did, uh, what was it? What, what did we call it when we were trying to bring up a, 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 the Indie Fest at the national level? I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was it? I, it wasn't Sponsor Wars or Stable Wars. It was something else. Yeah, Fed Wars. Fed Wars. And the guys that I had believed in what we were doing. And we, did, we, had a, we had a heavyweight title. We didn't have a world heavyweight title. We had a tag team. We didn't have world because we weren't a world. Right. We weren't on that. And the guys that I got together with me, we, we took it from nothing and we made it something. And CWA has always been my baby and it always will be. As a matter of fact, if I ever came back to FedEx and 
we did that split thing where we had different feds, I would totally bring CWA back. Oh, see, now we're going to get a chain of people who want to see a CWA return. Um, so, and the answer to that is get us enough players, go knock on the doors of the people who aren't playing and get us enough players, and I'll talk Eric into being the guy who opens the next Fed. So there you hey, go. Hey, I'm going to say, I would love to. I would love to get, and when I'm referring to Mike, I'm talking about the guy who played Eve Riley, and I believe he did Homicide. I uh, know he did Nate Daniels. No, Nate Daniels. I'm sorry. Homicide was Jordan. Rude? Yeah. Jordan. Jordan was Homicide. I always liked Homicide. If I, I would love to get Mike back. I would love to get Mike back. And, 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 and you know, Mike was just, I, I, you know, and I feel the same way you guys do about the female wrestlers, even though I played one or two. I get where you're coming from, but I always, the, sometimes it's just about the way people write. Yep. Kitty, Kitty was a perfect, there was some, the, the, the descriptive way he wrote, the descriptive way Eve wrote, or Mike did Eve. I'd love to have Eve back. I think that would be awesome. I know that's probably not going to happen. Or I, I'll take Nate Daniels too, but. Yeah, I'm with that'd you. That'd be great. Hey, great one. Um, I'm still looking to see if any other questions come through, but I had a thought and if I can recapture it, I'll throw it at you because I think it's a whole nother podcast, but. but Okay, all right, I'm down. But there were a few rolling by that I think were, you know, were pretty in. The, there is a an ongoing trend in the live stream to ask you uh, whether or not you are one of the characters on the board that I generally think are trash and don't mention, talk about, or, or really think about. And it's driving them nuts that I won't ask you. And I just wanted to talk about it and then not ask you so they could yeah. be even more frustrated by it. Um, a Max is asking uh, about your top three commissioners you worked under, but I think we got that when we talked about who your top five commissioners were. You really well, I mean, but that's actually, I and I'm cool with that question because I some of the some of the guys I didn't work, I never worked. I, if, and 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 he can probably correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I ever worked under Titus. I just watched his work. Right. Um, as far as the top three commissioners I actually played under, Lars. Obviously, right. Duh. Um, Papa Guido again, and I don't know whatever happened to Papa Guido, but I give, I mean, he 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 was, I enjoyed playing with him. Papa Guido was great, and um, I thought about going with Judge, but I would go with Ridgeway, yeah, Ridgeway is a great choice. Ridgeway. Honestly, we've been talking about Ridgeway for a while, and the truth is, if one of us could figure out how to tap him on the shoulder and get him to know we were playing, he's a guy we'd really like to see back. Um, yeah, absolutely. Brought a lot I mean, to the game. I mean, when when we started up, and you and I were running things, and and you know, and I know Tim came in a little bit here and there and helped out when he could, but I mean, Ridge, I, if I if my memory serves, Ridge took over and he did a great job. I mean, and he yeah. took over and was doing things when we were super active. And, and he did a he did a phenomenal job. I mean, you're talking about a bunch. I mean, look at the people we had and the group we had. I mean, that's not, a, you know, that that's like in training. That, that's like trying to contain organized. That's just trying to organize chaos when you're dealing with all of us, right? I mean, Max alone is organized chaos. <laughs> so, I I have not been able to remember my idea and I know it's going to come to me. So I know that we're going to get back together and do this again. Yes. Um, before we go, I think I'm going to open it to you and we'll see if anybody out there wants to throw answers up for us. Do you have any questions for all the people on the live stream? These, these are your friends who have not had a chance to connect with you in ages. Uh, this is your chance to throw to them. Let me, my first question would be to Tony, how's it feel to know you're never going to be on my level? That is the right question. <laughs> See, unlike your little FedEx belt, this would be the ultimate championship right here, son. So what do you got for me on that? Um, if I had other questions for other people, let's see. 
Well, I get. I don't know. If Tony has anything to say or not. <laughs> um. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, other than actually asking legit people how they're doing that I haven't talked to in a while, like right. Gino and so, and, uh, you know, Tony just says, "Bring it, Grandpa." Grandpa? Okay. <laughs> you know what? Tony might single-handedly get me to come back. <laughs> I think that might be the motivation there. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I would I would relish a nice good feud with the old lion and the young lion. I think that would be fun to do. I yeah. think that'd be fun to do. Well, and, and then I have a Matt, Maverick Dawson where the stipulation would be stop calling yourself by my name because there's the one and only, and that is this guy. Right. Absolutely <laughs> right. I love it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, uh, no, other than that, um, you know, other than asking everybody how they're doing and whatnot, I mean, maybe one of these days we all have to meet in a centralized spot so that we can all go drinking together because I don't know about you. I would love to get shit-faced with Bill. Oh, I've done it. More than once. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to get shit faced with you and Bill, and I'd like to try some of Lars's home brews. Done that too, and it's fantastic stuff. Um, I don't fly, so it'd have to be someplace I could drive. Listen, I was uh, I was two hours from you. I was in Orlando uh, uh -huh. when the COVID lockdown took place. Oh God! And they were talking about closing our border, and so I got in the car at five o'clock in the morning in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think five, maybe 5.30. And at midnight, I was in Toronto. So all I'm saying is everything in between for you, we should be able to do. Let's sort something out. We need to, we need to do something because, I mean, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of having you in my home a couple times. You have. That's right. Um, unfortunately, I've never really been able to meet anybody, and I would love to. I mean, I would like, God, I could just imagine – we could spend it. We could go to a restaurant for lunch and we'd be there when they closed. We'd be all drunk and just eating and having a good, I mean, I, you know, um, the COVID thing sucks. Yeah, it does. I mean, not for me. I've been social distancing since 1989 because believe it or not, I'm probably one of the most antisocial people you'll ever meet. I hate other people. I'm aware. <laughs> uh, I, I am, I am the kind of, I'm the kind of guy, let me tell you this. If I'm your friend, you got a loyal friend. I'm telling you that right now because I don't make friends really. I've never made friends. I mean, most of my good friends live 5,000 miles away. I mean, like, not, and I know I'm exaggerating, but, you know, none of you guys live next door to me. I don't go hang out with a buddy over the I, weekend. I just, that's not what I do. So I would love to get together at some point. That'd be great. I totally agree. Uh, I saw a couple of things on there. So let me comment first uh, to my tag team partner, Genocide. Let me just say, the party at Jeff's is always available. The problem is that I'm pretty sure price is not allowed in Canada. <laughs> has, has Excess been around tonight by any chance? He's not been here, has he? I don't, I don't think so. Actually, that's not true, but there, there was a time when it was a question. I, he was in Toronto once, and we, we got together and, and got some drinks and stuff, but uh, it is my running joke that I don't think he's allowed across the border. Um, I think the other thing... Uh, that I saw go by. Did I see it? Oh, I lost it. That's the problem. It moves so fast that if I don't get it, I uh, I lose the question. Right. Anyways, we are going to do this again for sure. We had a, oh, yeah. a great evening. Uh, the, the live stream's been amazing. Everybody's been alive on it. We've got lots of great questions, lots of great jokes. Uh, I think you disappointed everybody because you hold your liquor better than Bill does. Um, Okay, wait, before you know, okay, let, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Bill held his bottle up at the end of the night, and it was three quarters gone. True. Mine's not three quarters gone. It's only half. But it, but it was also back. peanut butter whiskey. Yeah. Well, I mean, Fun. you know, this, I don't know. Anyway, I, 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 you know, I get it. But uh, I try to... I, I try to hold my liquor. I hope I hold my liquor. I mean, I feel pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Right. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, you've done great. Uh, hey, thanks for coming on. Love that we got to do this. Uh, 
I do owe everybody an apology. I wanted to have Royal Ryan Scott on, but he was just not interested in coming on. He uh, continues to say yes and then no show. He's generally a terrible person, but maybe we'll have him on next time. All right, yes. everybody. Thanks, Thanks for being with us. We will talk to everybody again next time. Thank <laughs> you.